Loud. <laughs> After it has been brought to my attention that I enunciate my hellos, I can now not think of them. Hello! <laughs> Welcome to High Rollers Dungeons and Dragons here on the Yogscast Twitch and on High Rollers DD on Twitch as well. I am your dungeon master, Mark Sherlock Humes, and joining me this week we have Chris Trot. Hi. 
<laughs> Kim Richards. Hey. It's all right. Don't worry. TJ's on it. I know he is. And on the other side, we have Tom Hazel. Hello. And Rhiannon Hello. joining us. Katie is away in Scotland for her birthday. Scotland. She's not here this week. Yep. We're all here. Birthday. Hello, friends. Hello. Uh, before we get into tonight's very exciting episode of High Rollers, I'm excited for this one. I've been doing a lot of prep for this one. I've been building things. Yes. Um, before we get into that, a couple of announcements. First of all, a big thank you to our sponsor. They've been with us the whole time since we started Campaign 2, D&D Beyond. We Woo! love it. We've just done our leveling up on it. Um, yeah. If you are on High Rollers D&D Twitch, you can check out the Twitch integration, I believe. Mm -hmm. Is it on? Yes. <laughs> where, I, where I rushed away. Where you rushed away. So you can check out the Twitch integration over on High Rollers D&D on Twitch. Check the um, screen. Check, look at all the stuff, look at HP changing as we go. Um, D&D Beyond is an amazing compendium, it's got a character builder. They've just released, released Dungeons of the Mad Mage and the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. So two brand new books over on there. Yeah. Um, nice. Check those out. Very Thank cool. you very much D&D Beyond for your sponsorship. We love you. Much appreciated. That's with Kim's hair. Kim's got some new hair. Some other new things to talk about. <laughs> High Rollers uh, merch. Rush past that one. <laughs> High Rollers merch. Go to store.yogscast.com if you would like to pick up some amazing High Rollers merch. We've got tote bags. We've got the Aroes, Aroes Dice. They're sold out now. Don't show those off yeah, Gannon. Yeah, they're, they're sold out. No, ignore me. But you can get a shirt, you get uh, hoodies. We've got our new 2019 calendar, which is available for pre-order. Yeah. Next week, we should have some of them to physically show off. Ooh! Ooh! Uh, so they're actually going to get cool. them in the office. We can show them off. So they're it's, on pre-order at the moment. They're on pre-order at the moment, yeah. but check them out. Um, really, really cool. We've got artists from uh, some freelancers, fans who, who we worked with to produce some amazing artwork I drew for one. it. You didn't draw one. That's a lie. That got taken out. There's some cool stuff. There's <laughs> new artwork from Nina. Something There's all piece. of our previous shows we've done uh, pages for as well. There's also like unique holidays in there for like when the campaign starts and things like that. Yeah. Check those out. Pick them up. Every time you buy merch, that supports us. But even more, if you buy any merch on our Yogg's Cast store, whether it's High Rollers or Hat Films or Flux Buddies or Tom. other shows, <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you use the code. What the hell? High rollers! Then you get 10% off no matter what you order, and it goes, it helps us a little bit as well. Yeah. So use that code, it's really, really cool. You can buy anything on the Yogg's Car store, you get 10% off, and you can buy a new Flux Buddy shirt. Look, Kim's got it on right there. Nice. And you can buy a new Flux Buddy shirt, you can buy high roller stuff, buy whatever you want, and you'll get 10% off, and it helps us as well. Is there anything else I've forgotten about announcements? Uh, um, please submit fan art to highrollersdnd at gmail.com. I really want to make a new video. Thank you. And then podcast listeners, obviously podcast Mondays and Thursdays. It's on everything. Apple, Spotify, You name it. It's everything. not on uh, Google Podcasts because they won't let me do that yet. They won't let me do that yet. Because it's not available in the UK. It's on Spotify, it's on iTunes, it's on all those other things. Do make sure you give us a rating and a thumbs up or a comment or a like or whatever they call it. I don't care. Yeah, wherever uh, you listen to them. Wherever you find something. High Rollers, support it. Wait, Just search High Rollers d d anywhere. We're probably there. Probably. Almost there. Yeah, most likely. I think that's it for the announcements yeah. this week. So let's run that Heroics intro video and begin. Heroics. So, to recap on what happened on the last episode of High Rollers Heroes, um, the party have made their way to a town called Ironwick, um, a small 
used to be a trade town has now kind of become a bit of a tourist trap with not much else going on it along the Golden Road, a long trade road that leads to the city of Gold Throne on the continent of Suvona. Along the way, the party have encountered a number of trials and tribulations, one of which includes the attempted kidnapping of a young girl called Valor, who the party helped uh, rescue from the crashing airship that they were all travelling on. Upon arrival in Ironwick, the party discovered that uh, uh, a woman, a beast walker, a rabbit woman called Sanna, and her human client, Galen, were being run out of town by the locals for fear that they'd been stealing from the town. Galen is looking for his missing daughter and had hired Sanna as a bounty hunter to help him locate her. The party uh, spoke with the couple and learned a little bit about what was going on, that there were some things going on in the town, including a mysterious green glow emanating from the lake. After discussing things with the team, Nova was the one who remembered that the green glow reminded her of the crashed Court of Shadows shuttle where she'd found her sword Tiang Gong. The party then did some further investigations, leaving Quill, Ayla, and Valor in the local general store, where after using a detect magic spell, Quill had come to realize that there was more going on than meets the eye. Mm. Um, and that's where we're gonna jump back in today. And in fact, uh, if we get the little map cam in the corner there, DJ, uh, we can see uh, exactly what's going on. Can I just say that that previously was very good. Thank you. I just really I didn't have it prepared. Sharp to was, the point. It was completely off the top of my head. Really good. Thanks, I like that Tom. One. <laughs> are you fishing to be it. Golden Boy? Or? I have inspiration. No. <laughs> Damn it. But, but you are my favourite for today because you've had a, a tough week. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, check out Tom's Twitter for, for that saga. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so we can see, so the Acorn and Bale is a general store. Um, uh, there is also a, a, another building which is kind of attached to the side which serves as a local pub, but the store is somewhat separate. Yeah. Um, Quill, Ayla and Valor had gone inside where you were speaking to two of uh, the cert, like the staff girls. Um, the dwarf owner, Bodwin, is currently passed out by a table near the door um, and the girls <laughs> are basically helping Valor and Ayla look over items as a distraction whilst you would cast Detect Magic. Yeah. And you had revealed that there was a strange arcane glow coming from the back room, which is over here. Yeah. You'd also detected that they had some very minor enchantments on necklaces of a strange pair of crossed swords over a star. Um, like a like a four-point star, not like a cheesy gold star star. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, and there was also something magical about the tea that Bodwin was drinking from and had fallen asleep. Okay. Um, and that is literally where we left things off. Quill just realizing this as did his I... eyes glimmer with magic. Yeah, did I identify what uh, types of magic? Um... So I think that the, um, the necklaces that they're wearing is, you don't even think it's necessarily a school of magic. It's a very minor enchantment. I see. Um, you, it, it's probably an enchantment effect, but it's very minor. The um, the warded circle out in the back room is abjuration, right. um, and the T is also enchantment. Okay. Okay. Um, and you can see Ayla is like looking over, like cross shoulder towards you, like, mm, come on, like, ah, oh, uh, yeah, these knives. Uh, oh, not sure which one I like more. Um, Ayla, Vala. Oh. Um, I think um, it's probably best we discuss with the others uh, if we do want to buy stuff. Apparently they've been here already, so we should probably make sure uh, we're not buying duplicates. That would be very silly of us, after all. Um, uh, Valen's like, oh, oh yeah, good idea, Quill, and kind of starts backing off a little bit. Um, uh, but Vala, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely come back to buy you something uh, for yeah. you if you want. So when you, you start talking to Vala, the tiefling girl that she's talking to, she's wearing kind of like the similar garb that most of Iron Wick seems to be wearing red skin, kind of horns, black hair. She's like, so your name's Valor. Man, you sure are a pretty one. And uh, it's, uh, it's uh, no, thank you. Uh, and just kind of looks around like, well, y'all are welcome here anytime. Uh, we'll uh, definitely be back. Uh, thank sure. you. Sure. Good, good, goodbye. Bye, bye Birdman. Bye, uh, um, Kukra. And you, uh, yeah, you, you leave. They don't okay, show no good. sign of... Um, uh, in that case, I'll communicate everything I saw to Ayla and Vala, and then I, we knew where um, the other guys Yes, were they had all gone down to the boat uh, to see about, inquire about renting a boat for the evening. Okay, I think I'll sort of push down that way then to, to meet up with them and let them know what I found. Okay. So yeah, you guys can all meet back up at um, Galen and Sanna's Lodge. 
um, easily enough. What happened with the boats in the end? Ah, uh, they're really expensive at night. Oh. Yeah. At night. Yeah. Well, we said we couldn't go out at night. That would be. I mean. Nova lies. What? <laughs> she pretended that we were in romance. <laughs> Why would you? It's very nice in this. I mean, it was quite romantic. Honestly. <laughs> I felt it. Was it necessary? Absolutely, to try well, and get a discount. Yeah, I just wanted to see if we could get out on the lake at night. Okay. Nicely. I mean, and not say that we're going down to a green blowy boat, which, uh, sure. whatever it is. Um, Kim, what do you think it is? It's, I think it's a ship. It's a ship. It's, it's the remnant ship. Would like a, like, like, like an airship, like <coughs> you were traveling on? Or, or, or? I'm guessing that's what they had. Like, you know, they go in the sky. And come okay. in. They came down from space in them. You, so one thing did you would remember Nova, yeah, they did. The main thing you would know is, is it's very different to the airship. Mm. Um, when you went inside the shuttle, the the ship itself seemed to be built from this black crystal mm -hmm. and it had these green power lines. The airships are made from wood. They're like sailing ships, but they have magical sails and things like that, which allow them to fly through the sky. But one is, is very alien and one has been built here on Erois. Okay. Um, you think that the, the ships are very different. Yeah. And the, the one I found was more alien. It was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a spaceship. It was a shuttle, yeah. okay. like a small skiff, yeah. um, okay. like a, a smaller kind of scout vessel. Yeah. Um, so many years after the Sundering and that, you know, big crit event in a rose. How yes. much do, say, people like Quill or, I guess, Lucius, how Regular much do they actually scrubs. know about that sort of thing? Like, so, if you say... It's yeah, it's kind of like how much we would know about 500 years ago today, right? Like, there are historians who have researched it, but a lot of knowledge was lost, um, and a lot of people didn't survive. It was really only the Sky Cities that survived well yeah um and so they have re records of things so yeah everybody knows about uh callus starbane and the court of shadows who are this this force that came from the sky from the dark beyond they call it the dark okay. above um they came down in these black crystalline spaceships um and they had monsters and they had these be alien beings and fiends that worked for them and it was terrible it, it was classic super evil space villain came down and tried yeah. to and take I guess the over planet the years, over. It's, it's, also it's been it's exaggerated and it's you know become a, it's become a legend almost you know if there were some sort of really wide parchment which shows the sundering <laughs> yes. in some way yes animated yes that would really help you, you've in seen your mind like a like a, a tapestry like. yes very much so <laughs> very good <laughs> um, but yeah but yeah records from that time is like yeah the the sky cities have the most complete records but the problem is that the sky cities whilst they did survive and they were saved they also went through a lot of hardships you know initially until they discovered ethereum the sky cities had no way to replenish their food they they had to kind of prioritize what they focused on and so writing things down wasn't really at the top of their list okay. so there is surviving records but not great versions and in terms of uh, like activated this is tom talking about yes of course, yeah. in terms of like activated remnant ships Super so rare. the only ones you guys would know of, and I think Quill, you'd be the best one who would know this because you're a you know messenger and you've learned a lot about the world, mm -hmm. is um, the Dragonborn. They arrived just before Starbane did from the sky and they came down in very similar ships, but their ships were gold crystal. And their ships, they still have a somewhat active power mm. um, and they basically most dragonborn live and work in their ships these ships that they came down in they they, they have a very naval like a uh, military culture okay. and so they kind of operate as if they were still a military and they work like an and outpost. they function yeah they, they these ships have become outposts but they're not they they don't have the power to fly or to fly around and stuff like that anymore but remnant ships are either derelict and have been completely ransacked or they just were destroyed and nobody knows what happened. Or not discovered at all. Um, yeah. And then Sentry for you, I mean, you were in the war. You were there when these ships were attacking Solvin. Um, they probably wouldn't have sent, they would have sent like maybe like one or two really big battle cruisers, but a lot of them were these kind of vanguards or scout ships. Yeah. And they have like, they can shoot energy down from like, the sky, um, they would often transport like winged beasts like demons and fiends and things like that um, and send those down to attack the ground forces. Um, and remnant tech is very advanced. Like the Court of Shadows had advanced technology beyond Eroes's. Um, they had highly magical, highly advanced technology um, which allowed them to do all this stuff. Um, and so yeah, you would have known it from a first-hand experience. Like if you see one of these ships, you'd recognize it. Yeah. Um, Nova as well because she's seen one of these scout ships. But the, for Lucius and, and Quill and Ayla, 
you guys have heard, maybe seen drawings or paintings of them, but you've never seen one in real life. Okay, fair enough. Lore dump complete. Yeah, I was just um, making, yeah, just uh, just wondering, because like, would I be able to say, you know, oh, there's a ship down there, it's, the, it's those guys. It's not, um, un, it's not impossible that there could be one down there. What's strange is that it must be deeply buried under like the earth or something for nobody to have found it so far. Um, mm. Or it could have been laying dormant and just nobody realized yeah, it was there. Yeah, no one would have seen it if it was just in the water. Yeah, it is a very big, a very yeah, deep I was lake. Say it's a deep lake. It's a very big, deep lake. So fishermen probably not, but somebody would have sent something down to scout, you know, salvage it or something like that. You know. Okay. Um, but yeah, so there you go. I don't know if you'd like necessarily believe Nova as well. Like you might think that Nova's maybe got it wrong, like because it it's such a big. I don't know. It could be such a big idea that there's a ship down there. Yeah, that's, ma like, that's mainly what I was wondering. Yeah. Like, like, what are the actual chances of it being what Nova said it was? Like Slim. Yeah. Not impossible, but slim. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, I haven't got any other alternative suggestions, so... Yeah, so that might be like Algae. Quill's, Quill's Algae, yeah. reasoning is like, well, I can't think of anything else that could be doing it, yeah. so you trust Nova for now, but you're kind of skeptical about it, maybe. Yeah. Because Nova sees ships everywhere. <laughs> um, true. <coughs> so anyway. um, you're arranging all of this and you can see that Arvel is talking to Galen, this kind of human man with um, kind of salt and pepper hair, looks very ragged, looks very tired. Um, and him and Arvel are kind of just like having a quiet conversation off to the side. Um, yeah, and the rest of you all come back. Uh, Santa looks over at Quill, Ayla and Valor and is like, so how did it go? Oh, uh, well, we um, went to the shop and there are two um, girls working there, uh, who I imagine have been there for a while. Yeah, the, the, the young girls, I've seen them around. Um, yep, yeah, they're lovely. Uh, they've got, I, I did uh, detect magic and I saw they had some enchantments around their neck, uh, amulets, uh, two cross swords over a star. Okay, um, so when, <clears throat> when he says that, for Sentry, that is something you would remember very clearly because that is the flag that would hang from Starbane's forces. Oh, cool. That, oh, that. Okay. So when they would go into battle, like their yeah. banners, their armor would have this same thing oh, of a four-pointed kind of like D8-shaped star with crossed swords behind it. Wow, okay. Okay. Uh, wow. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um, that's, that's Starbane's um, signal, or their sigil. Starbane's? Um, that's, that's, that's... Sorry, what? Yeah. Um, as in the, the, the remnant, or...? As, 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 in... as in the big bad. Yeah. As in the Starbane that killed Siaska. Yeah. And that's not something I think the rest of you would know, because a lot of those were destroyed or never found. Like, the sigil itself wouldn't have really been remembered or, like, noted down. Mm. Um, they just, like, the names and stuff probably would have been. Why on Erevis would they have that? <sighs> Wait! The, sh the glowy ship? And then they're there? I mean, it's too coincidental, but what? How are they, how are the remnants still here? But why those two? Why those? They must be protecting the, the other thing you saw. The... <laughs> <laughs> the amulets, were the amulets magic? They were, um, but they're just an enchantment, small enchantment. Would Sentry, would you well, know what that is? If you I know? wouldn't know what that is, no. Did you find okay. anything else at the shop? Yes, yes, I did. Um, what did you find? Uh, well, the thing in the back, it's good you asked about that because there was something in the back. No way. Um, it was a ritual circle. Um, oh no. Uh, abjuration magic, I don't really know what that could be, but it, it's, it's, a, it's a ritual circle. Um, maybe see. there's a way in that shop for them to get to the place. It's where the trail ended. It was on the floor. You saw it. Um, yeah. It could be some form of... Can I do an intelligence check? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Or Arcana, this would be. Okay. Uh, so that's 12. 12? Yeah, I mean, you. it's not really your kind of magic, but you know up in the Sky Cities there are a lot of... Um, they call them spell rites, where they're not necessarily a full mage, but they can cast ritual spells. They can take time to do ritual magic. And there are spells which let them protect houses. You can kind of like ward houses or like doorways, that sort of thing. There's also um, rituals to like create uh, unseen servants. There's also ones which you can create ones which are kind of like just alarms, but also ones which will explode uh, upon, you know, being revealed and things like that. Um, teleportation circles would also appear in that way. Anything like that, really. Blair. 
Um, <laughs> well, I mean, if they're ritualing spells in the back of this plate, that's where the trail ends um, for the people that Sana was after. And in the back of that place, there's a circle. And if you're saying they can do teleportation from this circle, then they must be taking them somewhere. They must be going somewhere, and I know that the, the girls were brought here, so... Take them to the glow. How else would they get in there? And if they're remnant, like you say, um, they could be protecting it using the shop as a front. So does that mean the people, the people after Bala, the ones who can teleport through shadows and all of these things? Court of Shadows. The Court of Shadows. Then that's ultimately where they were being led to. They're and tied to these remnant here. Sounds like this is definitely the way we need to go. What do remnant look like? Are they just people? What are they? Um, Space you, people? You, you met them on the airship. They attacked us. Yes, but they were wearing cloaks and things. I didn't see their faces. So yeah, essentially you'd know... Um, yeah, they're, they're, it's mixed. Uh, the, the Court of Shadows army was made up of humanoids. Um, so humans, people that look like men and women. Um, not really the other races, mainly humans. Um, but also there were demons. There were creatures with like tentacled faces. Um, large eyes with multiple eye stalks, um, all sorts of Snails. bizarre creatures, um, all made up the forces of the Court of Shadows. But they also had constructs like yourself. They had like automatons. Um, they had evil dragons. They had you know uh, you know dragons very similar to the ones that came down before. They're all sorts of uh, creatures and, and races. Primarily though, it was um, yeah humanoids. Uh, they had a strange race of kind of yellow skinned, very skinny, large eyes, hairless kind of humanoids that had mind magic. They could they could manipulate, they could almost cast magic spells, but they weren't casting magic. They could almost like just create it with their mind. Okay. <laughs> so what didn't the remnant have? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> the races of Eroes primarily. Oh yeah. Yeah, and so, guardians. Guardians yeah. were... You know, they had automatons, but they weren't sentient like you are. They were like machines. Okay. I suspect, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they're pulling a fast one on us. Wh what do you mean? I reckon they're protecting what they truly look like so that they can blend in with the local populace. What, well, they are not tieflings? Why else would they have necklaces that are enchanted but around their neck? True. If they were just or, representative, yeah then it would just be a sigil, a mundane item. But these are enchanted, unless that's what Starbane gives to they his could be, best. They could be keystones to the teleportation circle, if that's, oh, that's what true. it is. Oh. Like it could be their oh. way to get through. Oh. I don't understand a word of this. No, no. Uh, Santa's also like, she kind of reaches up, scratches one of her tall bunny ears, <laughs> um, and just, just like, yeah, I, this is a bit beyond me. Daddy uh, has one of those. So you have an enchanted item, which right. then is used to, imagine a key unlocking a chest. Okay. It's the same kind of thing, but with magic. So you need the okay. amulet to power the ritual circle? It's an Possibly. assumption. It's to prevent everybody going through it, I assume. But in terms of, if it's disguising these girls, then wouldn't people have noticed that they're different people? Like, or... Or they could have killed the girls and replaced them. <gasps> well, yes. that's, that's, that's what I mean. Awful. They would have changed who they were. They would, they would have been assuming the life of this, these other people. You see Maybe. Bala kind of like looks over at you. She's like, Quill, they, they learned what my name was and that I'm here. Should, I, should we be worried? Uh, oh, good point. Um, I do feel like oh, we should they're definitely onto us. Yeah. What should we do? We uh, run away. We, we run away? We can't run away, Lucius. No, if these people are ones that are after me, if they've, if they've kidnapped other girls, we've got to do something. We have to stop them. Um, but we can't take, can we take Vala with us into this place? There's no way. This is, we're just walking what they want straight into the place, surely. Uh, Ayla at this point is like, yeah, but if we leave her here, if they send agents here, she's gonna be on her own. Like, I mean, I can stay up here with her. Me and Arvel can look after her up here while you guys check it out, but she shouldn't stay up here on her own. No, Whether we all go or some of us have to stay behind and watch her. True. I can change my identity, I can cut my hair, and we can all just, I can put Sentry in a human outfit. Is we this, can change our lives, we just is leave. This, is this the runaway plan again? Yes. We can't do that. What am I, firstly, how am I meant to disguise myself? Secondly... <laughs> Another human outfit. Uh, 
with a really big nose. What? Mm. <laughs> if we keep running, the remnant are going to keep coming after us for valor. And they're going to keep coming and keep coming and keep coming. And, and they're going to keep getting other people involved in this. Yeah. This is so much bigger than we initially thought, though. We're not going into just a cave full of husks. But if we don't stop <laughs> it, then when does it stop? When the remnant are back again or something? I don't know. They're, they're here, like... We're against... What are we going to do? Infiltrators from outside a rose. I mean, you were built for it, sure, and that's great. But you're the only one with any experience of these people. But then we have an advantage, surely, right? Uh, Santa looks over his like, Guardian, can... I mean, I'm guessing that these are just people, right? We can fight them. You fought them in the war, right? Yeah, they're, they're, just, they're made of different races. There's... Then we can still punch them, we can still kick them, stab them, beat them to death. Have you ever been inside one of their craft? No. Yes. You have. What? When did you get in? How did you get inside a remnant ship? Oh, oh! I said that out loud, didn't I? That was uh, my outside voice, not my inside voice. This is where voice. Tian Gong came from. You're, you're having dreams and stuff. He's right. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. This and I hold up Tian Gong. This came from one of their ships. <laughs> wow. So even though. Okay. All right. Um, Ignoring that for a second, that means you've got some knowledge of how these, their these ships work, right? Or the, what they um, look like? A base knowledge, yeah. The, the ship that I found was very small, um, more like a shuttle than an actual, definitely not the size, if, if given the size of that lake, definitely not that big. Mm. But, but I, I do have some knowledge, and, and I have Tian Gong who might be able to help and, and, and translate and, and... Or work against us. No. What if it's reunited with its people and no. it's then like... Kill switch. When we when we met the the, the, the the court of shadows on the airship on the sparrow blade, Tiangong didn't want to be there. I, I sensed fear. I sensed a need to be away. And mm. and when I found Tiangong in the first place, that was the same sense. It wanted to leave. It wanted to come with me. It didn't want to be used on that ship anymore. And it helped me escape because. When I was there, I was ambushed by a, a small group of remnant, and and he Tian Gong helped me get away. Well, in an effort to understand the emotions of a sword, um, will the sword be happy being inside the ship again? I genuinely don't know. Will it have performance issues? That's, that's what Quill's trying to say. I think mm -hmm. eventually. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it didn't when we fought the remnant before. True. I guess it didn't when we were fighting the Goliath either. My concern is, you found Tian Gong in a relatively small craft. Mm -hmm. What technology is in a bigger one? Are there 20 Tian Gongs? Are they all going to have one each with capabilities that Eros has not even seen? Well, there's only well, one way to find out. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, you guys can do what you want. I appreciate that you, you can make your own decisions, but I've been hired to find this girl, and if that's my only lead, then that's where I'm going to be going. Santa just kind of shrugs well, his shoulders. No way we're letting Santa go on our own. This is too big an opportunity. appreciate that, Quill. She just kind of gives you a solid nod from like seven feet. <laughs> <laughs> she like looks down. Um, I should point out, she's not seven feet. It's like, because of her, like she st ears. stands on her tiptoes and her ears. She's probably like six four, and then the rest is all like tiptoes and yeah. ears. Um, um, well, we do have one benefit. Uh, whatever they are, they're not Starbane's forces like they were hundreds of years ago. They're just people with the, the ideas, whereas we have an actual guardian from that time. It's true. Who is going to be far superior, have much more knowledge than they ever will. We can also take this easy, right? Let's, let's just find out what these girls are protecting in that back room. Then we take the next steps. We see where that leads. See where that goes. Let's not rush in, you know, fist swinging, guns blazing, but we can take our time. I like that idea more than yeah. running in there and taking their necklaces and... I mean, I've never really been one for violence. Well, let's figure out, what do we want to do about this store? Should we sneak in, try and see what they were hiding, or...? Oh, possibly, yeah. I, um... I... I think I can go invisible. What? That sounds pretty That's handy. Not... Yeah, I was just basically thinking about it and running a few experiments and stuff like that, and I, I think I can go invisible now. And then you just disappeared? Mm. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I mean... Magic. 
literally is. <laughs> At the very least, uh, if we do go in there and invisibility doesn't work for whatever reason, uh, don't drink the tea. Um, oh. The dwarf uh, who owns it, I can't remember his name. Bodwin. He, uh, Bodwin. <laughs> he, um, his tea was also magically enchanted somehow as well, I'm not sure. So how. they drugged him? Well, I, yes. He was passed out and he was drinking a magic tea. Hmm. Conclusion, they drugged him. Yeah. Sounds like they're already up to something. If I feel like, yeah. yes. Absolutely. Right. And I feel that that's the real store owner and they've infiltrated. Uh, at this point, it's now quite late evening. It's probably like 9, 10 p.m. Um, Let's get a nappy on the go. A okay. big long one. A big, big nappy. A nappy? A big, big yes. Nappy. There's big, no babies. A big four hour nappy. Eight hours for Birdie. Oh. Eight hours for you. That, yeah. No, I'm with you. I'm with you, <laughs> kid. That, that was a weird way of saying a nap. Yeah. <laughs> that, that sounds really odd. I mean, isn't night time the perfect time to go and sneak around? I'm no, tired, closing though. up the store. With heavy eyelids. What's up to you? Um, I, I don't mind trying out my invisibility and seeing what I can find in the store. No one wants a nappy. I mean, no, I don't want a nappy. how long will it take to head down there? Nova goes um, invisible, apparently. Wanders in, comes out, says what she saw. We go to sleep then. Have a nappy then. Yes, I suppose. I suppose okay. I can push it. All right. It's way past my bedtime, though. Ayla looks around and is like, do you want me to keep an eye on Vala, keep her here? Uh, at least for now. I mean, right. we're just investigating. We're not doing anything crazy. All right. Arvel? And Arvel's like, yep. I wonder if it's worth changing Vala's appearance. Ayla's like, what do you want me to do? I can't, I'm not going to do that. I can give her a haircut. Could give her a haircut. She's already got a big old cowboy hat on. Yeah, she does have the big cowboy hat on that she's put like her hair up into, so it's not hanging down her shoulders. But you can see Val's like looks at Ayla. <laughs> I ain't cut my hair. <laughs> um, it's just mm. I'm gonna cut her hair with a hammer. Um, bam. Okay. okay, so let's head down. All right. So uh, the four of you and Santa will go with you as well. Um, make your way down. Now the the town itself is asleep. Most people have retreated to their homes. There's a couple of windows, with like little flickers of candlelight, um, but generally Ironwick is near silent. The gentle lapping of waves against the shore of the lake just echoes out. You occasionally maybe hear something splash out in the lake. It quickly vanishes. Um, and just the wind whistles through the town itself. The store, there are no lights, um, but you find your way there. Those of you with dark vision kind of leading the way. Um, and yeah, you approach this empty looking building. What would you like to do? Well, everybody. I'm happy to stay back and keep a lookout. I think it's everyone stays back and you. All right. I invisible? Was, I was I guess. just wondering though, I can make someone else invisible, so I don't know if you would be more valuable with the tech magic. Although I can also um, cast identify, so. But I don't know. Identify doesn't work on spells, does like you can. I mean, you read the spell, tell me. Other magic imbued object. Would the floor be magic imbued? Possibly. <laughs> yeah, magic imbued, imbued object. You learn its properties and how to use it, whether it requires attunement, how many charges it has, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Sounds I, more uh, like it would only work on a magical item. You I learn also have that as well. Whether any spells are affecting the item and what they are. Okay, maybe then. Yeah, sure. Maybe. Um. Right. I feel like you're much more magically attuned than I am. Um, plus, probably stealthier. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So Nova's going to sneak on. Uh, yeah, I guess. All right. I guess so, I'll cast. Invisibility. So you cast invisibility. Uh -huh. Okay. So that's one of your spell slots, and then you you watch as Nova just vanishes from sight. Her form just kind of blends with the light. You maybe see like a pulse from Tiangong, this like dagger-sized blade. As it just kind of. I'd like to think actually that Tiangong is the kind of key to me going invisible. So, so like I start like, mumbling and then I'm kind of like, okay, if I focus on this bit, and I think, and if I say this, and then suddenly, yeah, like yeah. starting from Tiangong, I just like a shield yeah. almost goes. But you up. could almost like you use Tiangong to like yeah. cut the air, and then as you yeah. step through it, you oh, oh, so you kind of yes, yeah. and then that. you step through and you disappear. Uh, um, so you do that. I guess watch. everyone else is like actively keeping watch as well. Yes. So what we'll have is we'll have everybody but Nova make a perception check, including Santa, who has advantage because she has keen sense of smell. 
Um, she has, I should point out, I did mention this, she has a tiny bunny nose. She has okay. Like a flat bunny nose. So with my minus five, I rolled a zero. <laughs> what? Plus my perception. You're at disadvantage. Oh, you're at disadvantage. Oh, great. Yeah. Uh, I rolled five. Okay. With my plus five perception. So ten. <laughs> That's awful. No, uh... You don't get minus five, you just have disadvantage. Oh, I thought... It's passive perception. We oh, get of course. Five. Okay, yeah. Well, it relies on So spine. ten, yeah. So ten. 19. 19? 17. 17. Uh, 20 for Santa as well. So you guys are keeping a not lookout, and so far, nobody seems to be approaching, approaching the inn. Um, maybe Sentry and Santa. Santa's like, yeah, I can smell those girls somewhere, but they're not in the store. Like, she's like sniffing. I mean, you maybe hear like, almost what sounds like, you kind of put your ear down, you can almost hear like singing or chanting. Okay but you're not quite sure where from. So Nova, you make your way stealthily up to the door. Uh, you can see it's a wooden door. There is one window around the side. Um, and if you search around the back, there is another window near the back as well. There are two windows at the back. Um, they all appear to be locked. Cool. <laughs> um, can I try and pop open one of the windows? Yeah, sure. How are you going to try and do it? So they appear to be like, um, they're like pull down shutters and then they have like a latch on the inside. They're not locked like with a key, but the latch that keeps them held is on the inside. Can I cast Mage Hand on the inside yes, of the window to pop yeah. the lock? So you cast Mage Hand, the Mage Hand just flips the lid and then you pull the, the thing up. Mm -hmm. Give me a stealth check as you actually step into the um, into the actual mm. place itself. Like in a universe where Mage Hand exists, they'd come up with different lock styles. <laughs> Lowlands Mage Hand isn't common. Magic, okay. magic users in the Lowlands aren't common. Up in the Sky Cities, 100% yes. They're like, <laughs> okay. lol. Yeah. 18. Not falling for that 18. One. There's yeah, another you... Mage Hand that slaps the Mage Hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have uh, Mage Cats that hunt Mage Hand. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, no, so you step in quietly, mm -hmm. you shut the window again, um, and just creep around. You're now in the stock room, and you can see there are shelves um, covering things, and this is where Quill told you the magic circle was, but obviously you can't see it without the tech magic, so. Mm -hmm. um, uh, okay. Well, I guess, could I cast Identify? And There's nothing around I... you that you can see as magical. You can make an investigation to try and search the, the place. Investigation, okay. No, I didn't realize the circle would be invisible without... <laughs> without yeah, well, you didn't, yeah. It's, uh, mm. yeah. It's 17. It. Yeah, so searching around, spending a bit of time with investigation, um, you, first of all, this is a stock room and it's full of generic general store stuff, mm -hmm. but in the floor, you pull back um, like a round rug Mm -hmm. and there is a trap door um, underneath it. Mm -hmm. And you can see that scratched into the kind of rim is faintly glowing runes um, around in a circle on the trap door itself. Okay. Uh, can I cast Identify So you cast that? Identify on the thing, and I think because it says an, an object imbued with magic and you learn if it's affected by any magic, yeah. I'm going to say that this works. Uh, you, there is an alarm spell cast upon the okay. trap door, and you know that the alarm spell, that if this trap door is opened while the alarm spell is active, it will silently tell whoever cast it and whoever they designated that the door has been opened. It's like a, they'll hear like a ring of bells yeah. in their head. Okay. And as you get closer, you can now begin to hear coming from below the floorboards, yeah, like a chanting, like a ritual chanting. Sounds like three voices, three okay. feminine voices. Mm. I'm gonna sneak back, and I think, can I just open the window? And like, are, are you guys outside? We're like, kind of, you? we're nearby. Look, really. okay. I've got like, if, if you're keeping watch, like four of you are in four corners, and you're like keeping an eye out kind mm. of thing. Yeah. Um, if I could be like, Psst. yeah. Hey. Like, yeah. Whoever's closest then gets the others, and you all kind of yeah, converge yeah. on the back window. Pineapple. <laughs> Swordfish. I can hear, I can hear pineapple and swordfish. Right, that's it. That's the code. <laughs> that's the code. <laughs> Let's get back. Um, oh, I, I found, I found a trapdoor. You trap need to whip. Stage whisper. I found a trapdoor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we are whispering. Um, it's got an alarm spell on it though. Um, and there's people oh. chanting underneath it. Underneath yeah. the trapdoor? Yeah, really spooky. We need to dispel it, but I don't have that ability. Uh, Skip that class, damn it. What? Oh, spell class. The spell class. I see. Uh, I have no. I can't do it either. Um, does it make? Does it? Is it like a loud alarm? Like would everybody in the town hear it? No. It will just tell whoever cast the spell that that it's been tripped. So I could trip it and then hide. Yeah. Also, you know. You are still invisible. 
Uh, I've got an, an hour. hour. Yeah. Of it's been like five minutes. Why don't you cast Identify? How does that affect invisibility? Ooh. Um, Are they concentration spells? Thank identify. You, so identify is a ritual. Does it uh, say me? concentration? Um, on the spell identify. The S um, touch instantaneous. If it doesn't say concentration. No. Then, it nope. It doesn't. And invisibility. There's nothing. Yep. There so you, the invisibility is maintained. If it doesn't disrupt the concentration, then because invisibility is a concentration. It would be the oh, sort of diamond symbol next okay, to it. Okay. So yeah, yeah. there's a diamond next. So there's Not R that. next to identify. That's ritual. That's yeah, ritual. That's fine. No C. So yeah, yeah. that's fine. So, um, yeah, so she's still invisible. Cool. I mean, you have this voice speaking to you from inside. If you want to o open it and hide, uh, then I mean, all you have to do is open it and stand there, really. But should we what's the be plan? nearby just in case? Is it just to see who's under there to to disrupt the ritual, or did you see anything in there? Well, we need to get down there, right? That's yeah. I don't really know how we'll get down there without triggering the alarm. Once the alarm's triggered, whoever is meant to hear it will come down. Usually, what it's the down? when they come up. If we go down when they come up, then we are. Or if you wait for them to come up and pop them on the head. It's not much of a surprise, but what else can we do without removing the spell entirely and sneaking in? Um, well, yeah, exactly. It's either we open it to find out who's under there, open it to uh, jump in ourselves and probably get attacked by either the people that are under there or more people that are meant to hear this alarm, or we... I can't, there was a third plan, I can't remember it now. Set fire to the shop. No, no, God no. <laughs> Let's not do that. <laughs> from, a, from a civilian standpoint, we've already trespassed, broken into. Oh, say no. for example, right? I'm breaking the law. Say for example, we've gone at a very weird tangent and these people are actually normal and nice and they just have an alarm for their trap door because that's where their storehouse is. And True. we are just breaking and entering at this point. Well, why are they chanting spooky chants? Why do they have why do symbols? They have symbols? Yeah. yeah, that's not a. They thing could be they... a straight. I mean, that's not exactly illegal. It's not, but it's pretty suspicious. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. You're not being devil's advocate. I get here. what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I mean, demons, ad guess... Starbane's advocate. I, don't... <laughs> I could make a noise in the shop and hope that they come up. That might be enough. You don't know who Do else you know if, that if you trigger the alarm, is it triggered until it's recast again? Yes, you would know that. They would have to cast it again. What that mystical voice just said. Why don't, if you trigger it, hide, when they come up, you go down. See what's down there. What if I get stuck down there? Get a message to us? Somehow? Uh, I'll send a, I'll send a... Nothing to you. Okay. I... <laughs> I can send a message. I can constantly have like a cantrip. You just keep casting messages. But, so I can do it as long as I know where they are within the, well, between one foot of stone, one inch of metal, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So like, I guess I'll just keep doing Depends that. how deep she goes. Well, exactly. Like, I guess if you open the trap door and there's no one there, then I know that you, that it's kind of safe for us to go there. Does that make sense? So if you find a way to load them up, tri trigger the trap, then the trapdoor is opened. We're able to then go down there. Um, it sounds like you're doing a lot of thinking about this, Quill. I mean, I am. I'm gonna <laughs> go and open the door. You keep in contact with me. We'll see what happens. I like this plan. Let's get into position in case we have to protect yeah. Nova. That would be nice. As well. Okay, I'm can gonna... we? Can we have some? If, if for example, it doesn't resort to fighting. Can we have some reasoning to get ourselves out of it diplomatically? That's a good point. We're investigating missing children. <laughs> like that's what we're doing. Okay. And investigations led to here. This is where the trail ended. Usually we would ask permission. To illegally trespass. You usually have a warrant or something like that. For, yeah. you, you, you are not we're, we're, lawmen. We're vigilantes. <laughs> you, yeah, you are, this is very vigilantism. Okay, in that um, case, Sana, what's the normal protocol in this sort of situation? Don't get caught. Don't get caught. <laughs> oh boy. We're bounty hunters now. Oh boy. So if it comes to it, we just have to do the dirty. I've never been arrested right in my life. Just, look, if we get caught and the field, it will come down to the field warden. She's the one that, she's the law in the town. If she thinks that we've really screwed things up, 
She might arrest us. She might fine us. Um, oh, boy. Or but we can just run. We can book it out of town. Yeah. But we have cause to at least try and explain away. I think yeah. the fact that we've... Sentries heard the this chanting. No, they've clearly got magic protecting something. That's not normal in the no. lowlands, I should point out. Like, most people don't have the resources to use that sort of magic here. Okay. So... Plus, very common up in the Starbane sigil. I figure. Ship in the water. Oh boy. <laughs> End of the trail, children going missing. Yeah, it seems like it's... Think, again, worst case scenario, maybe we have to book it out of town quickly. But cut get, our hair, give you a human yeah, I don't need costume, to your human costume. Mm -hmm. Take all my feathers out. I, I think I'd suit brown hair. Paint me pink. Oh, pink. Mm -hmm. Okay, Nova, at this point, you've maybe got 30 minutes left of... If I get arrested, my parents are going to be so mad. Okay, here goes. Um, so, so can I go back? Can I use Mage Hand again to open the trap door? So I yeah. can like... Yeah, so hide. where do you want to be? Um, I want to hide, so I'm going to be invisible, but can mm -hmm. I also hide behind like maybe the barrels? Or so something? you're going to move over to like, there's a bunch of barrels and stocks and things like that, and you're going to kind of press yourself up <gasps> as best you can. I get in a barrel? <laughs> you, none of them are open. Oh, fine. Um, but you could stand on them, or you can try and basically like no, put I wanna yourself hide, behind I them. No, I want to hide behind one, like crouch behind yep, one. Yep, okay. Um, and then can I use Mage Hand to open the trapdoor? Yes, you absolutely can. So you summon the Mage Hand, nice. um, and you... And Good old Mage Hand. You hear the, the, the... It just <laughs> opens up. Um, the chanting stops. As, the, as soon as it opens, you hear the chanting come to an end, and you hear whispered voices going, kind of, and then you hear somebody coming up like a step ladder, and you see the human girl, Trisha was her name, um, kind of comes up, and you can see that she looks very serious, and she's kind of looking around. Um, is she wearing creepy robes? She's No, she's wearing the same outfit that she was earlier, but now the necklace is out, and you can see it's not being hidden by her clothing, and you can see the same symbol necklace. There is also a particularly nasty-looking knife in her hand. Oh, cool. Is it like one of those um, and really wiggly knives? And you advantage. Yeah. Wiggly. <laughs> it's got that slight curve, yeah. Classic uh, cultist Sacrificial. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, 11, 12, 13... 14. Okay, so she begins looking around the room and she can't see anything. She's like looking around in the darkness and she probably has a lantern. She wouldn't have climbed up with the thing. She's like just looking in the darkness at the point and she's kind of squinting, looking around. Um, Could I use my mage hand to like knock something over on the other side of the room? Yeah, you can. As you go to do that, you kind of put your hand on the barrel and it squeaks a bit. You just hear this like... But then you use your mage hand to like make... What do you... What do you Target like a shelf, uh, like just like a shelf. Let's like knock some of the potions. So you like knock like, some like, or, like some or glass trinkets. or something. Yeah. Like you knock something just over. Push. You can see she like looks over at where things are, but she's also glancing in your direction where she heard this squeak. Um, hmm. No. <laughs> no, Mark. Let me be. <laughs> she kind of looks around. She moves over towards. I'll put her on the uh, on the board as well. So she starts moving over towards like the shelf, um, but she, yeah, you did close the window behind you. So she's like just looking around. Um, yeah, what do you want to do? In your head you can hear Nova. Still there? Do I have to speak to reply to no. you? No. no. Uh, it's a whisper, so you have to whisper, but I think it says in the spell uh, that nobody else can hear it. No one else can hear it. Okay. okay. Girls has, okay, sorry. One of the girls has come up. She's got a really sharp knife. Okay, I'm communing I get getting that to everyone else then. Yep. Mm. Old ra radio radio yep. quill. <laughs> Over. <laughs> Twitter. One of three come up. So if she sneaks in now, there's two down there. Mm -hmm. So because it's quite dark, she's peering and then she kind of thinks for a moment and she like holds this necklace of Starbane. She speaks like she can hear her kind of almost like muttering some prayers. And then her eyes glow oh, with purple no. light and she starts looking around properly now. Um, Shit. Shit. Quill, I think she might be able to see me. I might have to subdue her. Help! She looks back over, like she looks at the things knocked down and then she looks over where she heard the squeaking barrel and she starts making her way over to her. And you don't get the impression that she's seen you, but she's suspicious about that area. Um, what'd you do? 
this is on you at the point Nova. Nobody else is, anybody else, if they want to jump in, you can, but it will be obvious. Like, you, yeah. you can try and sneak up to it, up to the window. The window is open, but unlocked. Sana, uh, have you investigated this place already before? Just, just the main floor. I've not, I didn't go in the back. What if you tried to knock on the door? Say you had further questions. I could try. Maybe that would distract them from... Sure. Okay. But also the alarm She starts off. trying... She stealths. So she's going to try and move quietly to the front. <laughs> <laughs> so as Stana starts moving, she's got these big, heavy, armoured boots, like, oh, that kind God. of, like... Uh, kind of almost, like, riveted and things like that. And she just steps on what would normally be a pretty sturdy-looking branch, but the weight of these boots, she just crunch... And she's just like, you see her head stop and her ear twitches like one little <laughs> thing. And the you see the, the girl, Trisha, just whoosh, turns on the window and makes her way. She steps over the kind of trap door um, and is basically making her way towards it as, as Sarah starts moving around to the front. So she's going back down the trap door? No, she's moving up to the window. To, and oh, now so she looks at the window and sees the latch has been removed. And she just gets the knife out and she, you hear her call down like, Zanny, Ven, someone's here. I can't see anybody, but something's going on. Um, quickly, we and she and you can see her now start to go down the step ladder. Can we hear that from outside? Yes. Okay. Uh, does Does Nova know that? Well, does Kim know? Does Kim or Nova know? Do, do either of us know? Because I haven't done invisibility for ages. That if I cast another spell, invisibility yes. will go. Go. If you attack, cast a spell, or interact with an object, like in a meaningful way, mm -hmm. like in a meaningful you know, way, yeah, so like identify opening a door, does. for example. <laughs> yeah. No, identify is not a concentration spell, so I don't think it does. If you attack somebody, I should say with a spell. But I thought uh, invisibility wasn't a concentration either. It is. It is. Oh, yeah, it's got a C beside it. I see. Okay, yeah. I'm done. Don't worry. That's not going to rule it for now. I don't have my books. I left them at my desk. So. You can read my thing if you want. Like. That's fine. I trust you. Um, I I'm, oh God, yeah, if you so attack her, her, if you try and do anything meaningful to break the invisibility, you can pick up objects and they'll become invisible. Yeah. I kind of want to use Mage Hand to, to, to try and take her necklace. You've done that already, haven't you? So that's all right. Yeah, no, but I've... if you try and grab something off oh. of her, I think that would probably break that the invisibility. Break the spell, it would be similar yeah. to an attack. Um, yeah, you can try. Ooh. What are you doing, Kim? I'm going to give you a few seconds before she's like I'm literally starting. I'm going to cast a Okay, sure. What do you suggest? So this voice out of nowhere says, "Take off your necklace and give it to me." Okay, and this is a wisdom saving throw. Yeah. And your DC is fourteen. So she stops and turns to look at you, and you can see with these blazing eyes. Um, and suggestion the invisibility breaks, by the mm, way. Yep. She just smiles. <laughs> I'm just stood there literally like this with my hands above my face, like, ah! She just smiles, like, when she sees you, as, the, as you, your hope, you're like, is the suggestion going to take hold? She's just like, oh, darling, Zarkilla don't go for none of that. And she is going to cast a spell. Can you make a wisdom saving throw, please? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> wisdom. Yep. Nine. 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 Your body freezes. <laughs> You're paralyzed. Um, you, she starts going up and picking up rope off the off one of the st shelves. Moves over to you. Make another wisdom saving throw. There is a knock at the door. Yeah. Seventeen. Seventeen. So she's just about to start tying you up when the hold person you manage to break free of it. At this point, let's roll initiative. Right. Cool. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, natural one. So. Bang it. Oh man, I'm last. Do you want me to do initiative? Uh, no, I'm just doing it now. Uh, I'm just because I've got it here. I don't have my whiteboard and stuff. <laughs> hey, what'd you get? 15. Damn it. Rock and roll! Hey, what'd you get? Uh, um, 18. Damn it. So everyone get higher than an actual one? <laughs> How? <Yeah. laughs> Probability. Uh, so, Quill. Uh, three. Sentry. 15. Nova. 21. Nice. Uh, Lucius. 18. <laughs> uh, so Trisha, I rolled a natural 20. She gets a 22. Oh, Let's see how the other two do. So she's going at... Sneaky son of a gun. 
It's okay. Zanny's Sana's gonna be like super quick. She's not. <laughs> Aww. She's like, dush, dush, dush. hello. <laughs> <laughs> hello. So she sees you kind of break out of this spell. Um, and there is, uh, give me an insight check, just as a free action. Insight. Yeah. 11. Yeah, you, you just, she seems like focused on you. Um, she will make another wisdom save as she kind of points and she says, I command you grovel. Oh, mean, 17. 17, you're like, you feel this compulsion to get on your knees and just not like begging basically, but you, you focus and Tiangong, you feel like a sense of strength come from your uh, oh, blade as you overcome it. Holy shit. Christ. I'll be honest, you didn't have to ask me to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Nova, you'll go. I'm pretty scared as it is already. Bye. Um, you can see that she's got this knife in front of her and she's holding her hand She's up. in front of the window that so, I'm locked, right? Yeah, she's basically, so basically you've got like a barrel between you. <laughs> Question. Yes. As Chris Trot. Yes. If someone casts the command spell, do they yes. know if it fails? Um, I think so. I think you would, you, there's an, oh, cause oh if, can I fake if like, you would have to have done it immediately. Yeah. You would have had to have said like, yeah, I'll just go down and kind of like- yeah, I don't want to influence your decision. Yeah. I think, I think it's, um, I think that they would know. I think that there's a, any spell you know if it's a success mm. or not. You could try and bluff it, I think, but that would be like, you'd have to make Super deception high, checks and stuff. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I'll look into that. I'll have a think about that. But for now, we're going to say that they know. All right. Can I, same way that Kim knew that her suggestion spell had yeah. failed, kind of thing. Can I disengage and run away to the door? <laughs> yeah, so you just... Bye! <laughs> so you actually don't need to disengage at the moment because okay. there's a five foot space between you. So you kind of hop over a barrel, so that's 5, 10, 15, We 20, get the map camera, TJ. 25, 30. Thank you. Yeah, if we could, TJ, that'd be great. So you start booking it out into the other room, the front of the mm -hmm. store, um, and she, you hear her curse like, oh, don't, like, as you run off, basically. Can I use Mage Hand? Like, so is that movement, do I have an so action? That would be your action if you're disengaging, but okay. you don't need to disengage, so yeah, okay. you can just use your new movement, so you still have an action. Can I use my Mage Hand to push her? The Mage Hand doesn't have any not, real, okay. like, it doesn't have enough strength okay. to push it. Well, can I use it to fumble with the lock then? Like, try and open on the door? Which door? The, the This the, door? Yeah, the main door. Mm, this one is a keyhole. Okay. Why am I running towards it? Is yeah. there another window? Uh, yes, window? there is. There's another window just here. Can I get it to like unlock yeah, you can the flip window. the latch off that. Yeah. yeah. So you use your mage hand and you flip the latch off that one. Yep. Cool. And in, I'm also screaming, help, 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 okay. help, to, to Quill's. So mechanism. Lucius, so you guys are all currently right. on the outside. So we'll put you guys over here. Help me. I'm mm. so squishy. Um, yeah. But you're all vaguely nearby. I'll probably have you guys like kind of watching the corners and then Quill sort of nearby for message. Bam. Cool. Yeah, so uh, Lucius. What do I hear? Running? Yeah, I mean, you hear the, con like you hear like muffled speaking. Um, you hear footsteps as if somebody's running away. Um, you probably hear like that I command you kind of like, but muffled because you're hearing it through walls. Senna, I, th I think Nova's been found. Get in there. All right, and you can see her like getting ready to kick the door down basically. <laughs> Because that's the only way that she's getting in. I'll go up to her. Uh huh. So I'll run to the front door. Okay. And then I'll cast Blade Order on myself. Okay. <laughs> Last one <laughs> round. Classic. The classic Lucius. Uh, sentry. Um, of course. Do I hear Nova running towards yeah. that window? So yeah. Can I go around to that side? Yeah. To where the window is. Yeah. yeah. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And then you could spend your action to dash. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Nice. So you start just running around the, the length of the building. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so that's centuries go. Uh, so uh, another figure. So uh, Nova, you'd see this. Uh, the, a dwarf girl um, that you've seen before basically pulls herself out onto the front um, and sort of like looks at Trish. She's like, Trish, what? All right, she sees you, and you can see that this dwarf girl, she has a very nasty looking battle axe, like a oh. kind of razored battle axe in her hands, and you see this very sadistic look on her face. She's just like, oh, good, I was hoping we'd only, we don't, I was afraid that we'd only have one to kill. Um, oh. I uh, don't want to be sacrificed, thank you. She climbs up, and then she would have five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 
15 of movement. So she starts like wading towards you, basically. Triggered. Super triggered. Okay. Sana will attempt to kick the door down. I think that's something she's very good at. Well, <laughs> she would be. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, no. badly. So the first blow, she kind of kicks it and the door resists. And then she kind of grunts and she's going to fucking do two big kicks into it. Uh, so those both hit. Let's do some damage rolls. Door. Mm, How much health does a door have? That's what I'm trying to work out. The door's bleeding. So Sad. she basically, the first kick like kind of gets resisted. She like boots it once and then she like looks at Lucius, goes, Ugh, kind of rolls her eyes, takes a step back, jumps up in the air and then with two kind of like, like straight kicks, just snap, oh snap. The door f flies off of its frame, slams up against like, it's like knocks over the table and then she kind of lands on her two feet and brings her arms up by her head. Um, and then that's, uh, and then she'd probably have just enough movement to go. I'm five, just in okay. shock. I love, I love her. And then Hot. she'll move up to to Nova, basically, and she puts her hand on her shot, your shoulder, like she's here. <laughs> uh, just gonna scream. Uh, oh. <laughs> then another figure emerges from the oh, bottom, cool. which Party. is the tiefling girl. Uh, she emerges, kind of looks up, um, sees you. She pulls out another sort of bladed-looking knife, and she will. She focuses for a moment and then her form begins to shimmer and become a blur. Um, and she will. 10, 15, 20, 25. Oh, hi. She moves very quickly um, and will step up next to you and will make two attacks against you. So that's a 16 and an 18. Both hit. Oh, hit. Oh, God. Oh, my God. What, wait, what oh weapon has she got? Just a knife. Okay. Just, Just a knife. knife. Just a big old. Just a six a six points knife. of damage, three damage each. Um, she just like psh, psh, cuts you twice, um, and just she as she gets there, she's like, "Van, quick, knock around, let's get him, get him, get him, get him." Is it a butter knife? Quill. It's not a butter knife. No. Right. It looks like a, exactly the same as the other girl had, like this wicked sacrificial-looking blade. So directly next to me, there's a window looking yes. into this room. Yes. Okay. I have been basically peeking through, yeah. <laughs> waiting for my turn. Uh, I'm going to cast on the middle one. Mm -hmm. On a 20 foot aura, calm emotion. So this one? Yeah. Okay, so great. So <laughs> give me, give me a, a rundown. So, uh, charisma save for 13. Everyone has to do it. What is an aura? Is it yeah. A radius. 20 foot radius. And they are all in it. Including Nova? Uh, I could do with Carmen. Carmen. 5, 10, 15, yeah. 5, 10, 15, 20, yeah. Um, Santa and Nova. So what do So I... each humanoid has to... Charisma saving three. Yeah, Santa must fails. make a save. If Santa fails, you... 18, 19, fail, 20, 21, 22, 23. You pass, I mean. Okay, so everybody but Nova failed. So what happened? Oh, holy crap. Everyone failed. Yep. The targets are indifferent about creatures of my choice. <laughs> okay. Which targets are your choice? Fucking all of us. Like, <laughs> is it any number of creatures? Yeah, you can make a target indifferent about creatures of your choice that it is hostile towards. <laughs> yeah. This indifference ends if they're attacked or harmed by a spell or if it witnesses any of its friends being harmed. Okay, and what's the duration on the spell? One minute. One minute? So for one minute, you just watch as they're like, they just come and they're like, oh! And they just like, y'all shouldn't be here. And they just, <laughs> like, the, 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 the aggression just goes out of them completely. Uh, <laughs> so we'll keep um, the same initiative rolls, but right now there is no threat. So there's, so Santa like moves up. The only thing I'd probably say is like, I guess would you call out like, to uh, say like, don't attack him or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I mean I've got, that was just my action. Yeah, that was your action. So I'm gonna so, yeah. like, through the window like, they're calm, don't do anything stupid. Because <laughs> you see Santa's like, well, like about to like roundhouse kick oh, his teethling in the face. No. Oh, no. <laughs> She's like, but then also oh, Santa's affected, so Santa's just like, oh. Yeah, Santa, I guess also. And like ears like droop back, Aww. just like smiles. Um, so yeah, everyone is calm. So you're just like, yeah, this, this um, situation just suddenly diffuses. And they're like, they, yeah, they look at you and I guess, I'm trying to think, they just say, Ah, uh, y'all shouldn't be here. We've got something. We got some business to take care of. Come on, girls. And then they start making their way back towards the trap door, going down. Oh wait, can we come with you? Are they? You know, no, no. We're doing. It's our private business. You can't are come. Are we still in initiative, or like? Vaguely, this, but like, I, I think at this point anybody can take actions okay. until something happens, and then we'll use the same initiatives. Hey, I really like <laughs> your. <laughs> I really like your necklace. Can I see it? 
No. And then they, you can see that they hide. They're indifferent to you. They're not, They're not charmed. Friendly, yeah. So they, they hide it. They're like, uh, no, y'all need to get out of here right now. And they just start making their way down. I'm just like, going to like shrug at everyone. Like, and we'll just go down. Also, you're, you're going to need to pay for that door. And Santa's like, yeah, that sounds fine. I'll pay for it. <laughs> uh, it's fine. We don't, Starts getting a gold out. Mm -hmm. We don't have long left. Once this spell ends, by the way, uh, should uh, we get down there? I don't understand what was happening. But they're not gonna. They're not, they're not gonna attack us for the time being. But once it ends, they're hostile again. I feel like we need to go down there. Do, 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 do. Yeah, they go down. <laughs> they're gonna go down with them. Let's yeah. go down again. Yeah. Okay. They, I guess they shut it, but. It's not locked, they yeah, just pull just the trap doors shut. Yeah. So we just open it again. And then you just go up and open it again. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're, like, we're they're down. indifferent to you. So they're just like, eh, whatever. Like, yeah. they'll just leave you to it. And they're not hostile, they can't be hostile to you. So they're just kind of calm, Let's they go downstairs. Let's just for that moment. So, go in then? what do you do? You just open it and Sentry, start hitting down. Do you want to go first? Gladly. Your big so Sentry, Sentry gets in. Yeah. So yeah, so, I mean, this is an amazing play. So Sentry, you start making your way down this like rickety ladder and you can hear this chanting and you see that there is a cellar. So what would have once been like a store cellar, you can see racks of supplies and bags of flour and things like that. One end of this cellar has kind of been boarded off and you can see that there is a chunk missing from the wall itself. Okay. And there is a cave, there's some sort of tunnel mm. or cave. And it's been boarded up. Right. In the middle of the cellar, in a ritual circle is Bodwin, the owner, <gasps> tied up, unconscious, uh and you can see that around they have got these kind of symbols. The symbols on the ground are different to the ones on their necklaces. The symbols on the ground appear to be a snake coiled around a spear tip, like a spear. Um, oh, okay. The which medics. is, um, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. Fuck, that looks way too similar to the staff <laughs> thingy, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> Shit. Hippo uh, mm -hmm. Something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I remember this. <laughs> this is from something, I'm sure I've seen it. Sentry has definitely seen it. Mm -hmm. This is another one of um, the Court of Shadows symbols, but mm -hmm. this represents uh, his second in command, who is a woman called Zarkilla, who was basically, she was like his second in command, like her, his main commander. Mm. Um, and she was known as the, uh, kind of to the to the Eroist forces, she was like known as the snake of murder. Like she, she is like a brutal to totalitarian conquest woman. Right. And you can see that the girls have got these knives and they're chanting a ritual and it looks like they're about to ritually sacrifice the dwarf who isn't part of the creatures you designated. So they're like, yep, going to kill this guy. <sighs> Uh, but they're chanting. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're indifferent to you. To yeah. them, he's like, no, yeah, we're yeah, still going to kill this guy. Kill guy. Okay. So essentially, you get down to the bottom, um, and they kind of look over, and they're like, oh, we told you, you're not allowed to be here. You should leave. <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to pick up some supplies. I thought you might have some down here. <laughs> <laughs> Can you show me where there's... Give me a deception with advantage. Oh, yay. Uh, okay. With advantage, you roll twice, set the highest. Oh yeah, okay. Ten! One. Plus I'll give them disadvantage. Twelve! Twelve. <sighs> we're not open, it's the middle of the night. Can't you see we're busy here? Uh, and they just gesture down. Don't, don't do that. Why? This is none of your business. Y'all shouldn't be here. Should, this is important business. You shouldn't kill a person. I mean, I'm kind of whispering to everyone to like start surrounding the room. <laughs> yeah, you can do yeah, that. Can yeah, you can absolutely them? do that. Yeah, yeah, your yeah. messages? Uh, yeah, I guess I can message everyone. You just message individually. So you've got like, like a minute. We're gonna have yeah. So I think like circling, I you literally got to the bottom and it's nearing the end of the minute. Because they, by the time they climb down and you guys got down there. So what would be a good gauge of how someone has good timekeeping in the game? Would Quill have good time. I think anybody with a high intelligence. Okay, fine. Hiya. Uh, yeah. Nope. Um, you're like, because it's like almost taking like a part of your brain to count whilst you think of other okay, things. Okay, fair enough. So you're like, like maybe Nova's been like, three, but also thinking of other things. Okay. Um, so you get down there, maybe it's nearing the end. And yeah, they just look up and they're like, this is none of your business, strangers. Get out of here. <coughs> okay. Um, we ain't got no quarrel with you. Not yet, anyway. Huh? <laughs> um, yeah. Everyone ready? <laughs> yeah. Do you guys want to attack first? You could just you can take attack action, attack actions now. It'll break can the spell, say... but you could all just go. Let's all, all go right, now. Well, three, two. <laughs> Everyone bar <laughs> Santa, right? Yeah. Can I say? Yes, Santa. Well, no, Santa, because Quill chooses who they're non-violent towards, and he chose yeah, you guys. So Santa's not violent to you guys. Yeah. 
but she's not violent to them either. I no. didn't choose. You didn't choose as the... Oh, okay. So it's Santa tricky. just was like, you know, calm down, but yeah. she's like, yeah, I can punch him in the face. I can <laughs> kick him in the head. <laughs> okay. okay. Is everyone is everyone ready then? Uh, we suggest you stand down, otherwise you're gonna regret it. I need to target one creature. No, I'm not gonna suggest. Oh. I'm, I'm like literally just trying to appeal to them. They're just like, this ain't your business, Ganassi. This is something we need to do. This is to appease our killer and the daughter of law. Uh, this isn't gonna work. It's uh, three, two, uh, one, <laughs> and everyone. Everybody gets a surprise round. So at this point, you all get a surprise round. <laughs> this is gonna be like the hero movement of everyone just shooting the big stuff. Yeah. <laughs> or it's more like Inglorious Bastards, where everyone just shoots each other under the table. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. So yeah. So um, yeah. Hit me. So yeah. Each of you, we'll just go around the table, I guess. So sentry. Cool. So there's three targets. So we'll kind of. This is. We won't use this like on camera or anything. Cool. You've kind of got you guys surrounding, surrounding this just sort like you of move circle. Yeah. yeah, like just there, clear And in the middle of three, three boys, three. three I say girls. boys. Three what girls. What I mean is three, three boys. Three boys. Boys. Um, Banter boys. Um, <laughs> so we've got just bantering. And we're all attacking at exactly the same time. We're ganking them. <laughs> so no. there's the three girls, and then there's Bodwin about oh. to be murdered. <laughs> So yeah, you guys are just surrounding them. So yeah, which ones do you want to target? You've got the human, the yeah. tiefling, or the dwarf. I'll target the dwarf. Okay, so you move up behind the dwarf. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Big your axe. Like she's got she's got this massive axe in her hands and you've got yours like, like mole. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, should we take we all, advantage? I mean, should we all determine nice. our targets now? Because if we're all attacking at the same time. And I'm figuring that like it's know. you basically you're all stood there looking non-hostile and Quill's like message door saying, right, get ready, and then Quill goes, now, and then you all spring into action. Otherwise this wouldn't be a surprise round, because they yeah. still defend themselves. But no, what I mean is yeah. if if Sentry, when Sentry kills this dwarf in one hit. Yeah. Like <laughs> potentially. I just rolled on that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> we have advantage. <laughs> With advantage. Oh thanks. So you roll right. roll twice say the highest. Let's go. 13. That's probably gonna hit. 19. 19, yeah. 19 hits. Nice. So roll damage. Do damage. you want to do yeah, anything bonus with it? Nah, just battle axe smash. Just battle axe? Yeah. Uh, so it's only the 1d8 unless you're using smite. Oh yes, yeah, that's that right, yes. Uh, so, so roll again. Uh, yeah, just roll 1d8 and then add your normal bonus. Okay. Four, that's eight. Eight points of damage. So the axe cuts into her back, but she's still alive. She, she's like, oh, eight, ah! Eight plus four, and look, my hit is plus six. That's the attack roll, don't forget. So oh, the I attack see. roll is to hit, and then damage roll is 1d8 plus Okay, four. yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, so, so price eight. is eight. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So Sentry hits that one. Who are you going for, Quill? Uh, I'm going to do a Guiding Bolt at level two. Which on, one? Um, I guess just the one closest to me. I don't okay. really... So the human girl? Yeah. Um, yep. Just a big old gunning bolt. Yep. So advantage on uh, the attack roll. Cool. A ten. Wow, these are garbage rolls. Um, where's it gone? Gunning bolt plus five, so fifteen. Hits. Um, and that's a lot of damage. Five d six. Right. While you're rolling that, Nova, who are you attacking? Um, I will attack the um... human dwarf tiefling. Who's been attacked so far? The human and the dwarf. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I'll attack the tiefling because she got me first, uh, and I'm going to use green flame blade. Roger your attack roll. What'd you get on the damage quill? Twenty three. Nice. Twenty three on the. You're attacking the human, right? Yeah. Okay, so twenty three. This blast of white feathers and light hits the back of her. Uh, twenty four to hit. Twenty four hits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, six points of damage to the tiefling, yep. and then four to the dwarf. Fall to the dwarf. Lucius? Um, I'm going to cast Lightning Lure on the person that's about to stab well, They're you. all about to do that. Right. They literally are bringing down their weapons In on the dwarf. In which case, the tiefling. Tiefling? Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to try and... So is this a saving throw or is this an attack roll? It's an attack roll with advantage, yep. right? Yep, with advantage. <laughs> uh, nice. Yeah, I hit. Yep. Hits. So it's 1d8 of lightning damage and I get pulled. Uh, you do a strength saving throw. Uh, like 18. I just yeah. rolled 18. So you don't get pulled, yep. but you would they take be actively saved four. Something? Yes, they still would, because as soon as it hits them, they yeah. kind of. Yeah. So four more. Four lightning. Okay, and then Santa will move up to probably the dwarf, because she looks the toughest, and give her a big old boot to the head. Woo! Well, she's dead. <laughs> um, well, after what she did to that door. 
So hits. Mm. Yeah, but she's only attacking once this time. Uh. It's a surprise round. Actually, no, she can make all of her attacks. What am I talking about? It's a surprise round. Oh, so we could all get bonus actions as well. Uh, yes, in theory. If you have a bonus action you yeah, can use. No, I spent a spell slot. Um, so that was... Okay. Six, and then two more attacks from Sana. All with advantage. Oh my god. Which one of which is a natural 20. Wow. Um, nice. Uh-oh. Ooh, a seven for the damage on that one as well, so that becomes 14, Is she 17. a monk? She's a martial artist. Okay. Um, she's not monk class. She doesn't have classes. I miss being a monk. Um, kicking people's heads across the room. I just remember just like, attack, another attack, another attack, another okay. attack. I'm gonna hellish rebuke. So, <laughs> all of these attacks take place. The girls are just surrounded. Now, I think... Who would have done the thing? Yeah, Sana wouldn't actively try and kill them. She'd knock them out because she's not a murderer. So you see the dwarf gets hit in the back with this axe. She kind of lurches forward and then just these three kind of like, Sana almost does like a chun where she spins in the air, like boom, 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 with these three armored boots. And the dwarf just is knocked unconscious, just burr, falls to the ground. The other two don't quite go down. Oh, um, but what about... The human girl is like blasted and you can see like her clothes kind of like smoldering from the impact of the magical energy. The tiefling seems to be faring the best out of everybody. Um, but they're kind of, they don't hit the dwarf, like their <coughs> knives go wide and stuff like that. At which point we jump back into the initiative, um, which I'll keep the same rolls from before just to speed things yep. up. Uh, the human girl is like, ah, ah, and turns around and she will cast, um, you hit her. Can somebody who's got, uh, nobody's got the player's handbook, do they? Can somebody look up Need. Dissonant, Dissonant Whisper? Dissonant, Dissonant whisper. whisper. Yeah. Um, and it's a second level version. I'm gonna win. Uh, Dissonant <laughs> Whisper. It's a bard spell. Sounds cool. Uh, I got it for you. Thank you. Damn it, I just got it. <laughs> so, uh, can you make a wisdom saving throw, please, Quill? Uh, yeah. <sighs> 46 more, so it's 2d6. Uh, uh, 12. 4d6, actually. Is it? Yep, it's 3d6 base oh, damage. 12. Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna take half damage. Oh, I passed, okay. You passed. Yeah, she's not super powerful. Um, and you don't get feared, but you still take seven, 10, 12, six points of psychic damage. Oh, um, my bean. As you kind of feel like these dark whispers, she kind of turns on you, these purple flamed eyes. Oh. And you kind of feel this dark presence in your mind, but you manage to banish it Here away. a million whispers in my head. Um, I've got a headache now. But she, so she's kind of dissonant. clutching herself. Mm. Like, get away! And she's, you can see her like panic. She's afraid and she's trying to move away, um, but she's kind of trapped amongst all of you. Nova? Mm. The tiefling girl is like, ah, and, like turning around on you. Uh, can I, I'm just checking how far a green flame blade. <laughs> it's a melee, so you have to move the melee. Um, but I wanna, I wanna see how far the, the second creature has to be within 30. five. 30 feet for the second one? Within five feet. Oh, within five feet, okay. Uh, which which the they girl... would be, they're next yeah? to each other. Okay. Yeah. 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 I guess I'll We're just... using a vague thing. So I'll not. just do that again. Okay. I'm just gonna hit. You don't have advantage this time. Wing Flame Blade. 17 to hit. Hits. Yeah, these girls aren't wearing armor, so. Uh, nine points of damage, plus four to the human. To the human girl. Um, yeah, you can see this green flame like licks her, and she, she really winces, and you can see like tears beginning to form in her eyes and she's just like panically looking around. Um, the tiefling girl like, ah, like winces as the blade kind of cuts along her arm and she kind of clutches it to her. Um, and she's also looking pretty frightened at this point. Can I, can I just shout out? Uh, just surrender, surrender. Yeah, okay, shout that out. Um, Wolf is unconscious. Sentry. Um, can I um, try and get Bodwin out of the situation? Try and move him somewhere so you just else. step in, pick him up, yeah. and then just try and move out of the way. Yeah. So they would get to attack you if they want to try and attack you. That's They'll get tax opportunity. Yeah. So you kind of step in, and they don't. They, they. It looks like they're so panicked by what's going on. You just scoop him up, put him on your shoulder, and just stride on through to the other side of the cavern. Yeah. And they're too busy, afraid of being surrounded, to really take any action against you. Yeah. And you just pick him up, <laughs> barrel right through. Nice. Um, Okay, so I think at this point, um, Sana like looks round, 
and she's going to try and knock them out. Like she doesn't want them to potentially fight back, so yeah, she's going to kind of yeah. step in between them, and she's just going to split her attacks. So she's going to hit the human girl once, bounce off one head into another. Yep. <laughs> That's another, which is enough. So she knocks the human girl unconscious. Um, so she kind of like wham, like does like a high kick into her head. The other girl kind of like faints from the blow. And then she turns on the tiefling. Um, one blow is going to miss. Uh, the tiefling girl ducks under it with a surprising agility, but then Santa just kicks her in the stomach with the second one. Four, jeez, ten. <laughs> Which knocks her unconscious as well. I feel bad that the NPC stole the thunder, but... I didn't steal the thunder, the it's, it goes. A, it's a bunny kicking girl. Like, yeah. No. So she just kind of like, wham, and, and then she kicks this other tiefling girl in the stomach who gets thrown against the wall and just... <laughs> just... <laughs> same. But they're unconscious, they're not dead. Yeah, she's, okay. she's actively not trying to kill them. Cool. Um, um, and yeah, you're left with this state of affairs. Wow. Um... <sighs> okay, was not expecting them to be killing this guy down here. No. Let's, um, right. let's subdue them, tie them up. I think that's probably best that's a good to idea. come around. Uh, I suggest we take their necklaces off. Oh. You, yeah. you in my mind? Huh? You keep saying that and people do things. What? Stop saying I suggest. Okay. <laughs> I suggest you calm down. Look, <laughs> I'm a powerful sorcerer. Uh, okay, so the plan is you're going to tie them up. Tie them up. Easily do because there's ropes upstairs and things like that. Yeah. Um, whoever goes upstairs to get the ropes, you can probably hear that some of the town are like, what was that big noise? <laughs> like the, the crashing of the door, like when Santa kicked oh, the door shit. open. Uh, right. Um, Should we maybe put the door? Anybody in? who remains downstairs, there is something really unnatural in this room. Oh. It's a cellar, but you get this sense that there is a presence here. And you just hear this, you heard my girls. And we're gonna take a break. God, yeah. Oh. Have a good time for it. Fair enough. See you after the break. Be back in five. Oh, Let's see you in a bit. Long.
Hello. Welcome back to High Rollers. Uh, everyone's eating Rice Krispie Squares, yeah. so they've got their mouths full. Like dinner. Um, oh. But we joined back in. What are you doing? I'm trying to get. Uh... I'm trying to get shadows or something on my face. Yeah. Um, <laughs> welcome back. Uh, the party have just discovered that, yeah, there's some uh, dark deeds going on in the town of Ironwick. Yeah. Um, oh, after discovering that there was a trapdoor, a, a magically warded trapdoor at the Acorn and Bale, a general store in town, they've discovered three the three girls that they were suspicious of, uh, a tiefling girl, a human girl, and a dwarf, um, have been up to something particularly dark and dastardly as the owner of the store was in a ritual circle about to be murdered <laughs> um, in a ritual sacrifice. But we join back in as yeah, this dark, hoarse, feminine voice is just kind of whispering. You can all kind of hear it. You're not sure whether you're hearing it out loud or if it's in your minds, but just this like, this is not a place for you. Why did you hurt my girls? Um, they were going to stab a, a man. Yes, a weak and foolish man. They would have killed him in the name of my lady, Zarkilla. Your lady? Zarkilla. Who's, who are you? <laughs> I'm but an old echo of a spirit. Uh, where are you coming from? <laughs> I don't like that laugh, do you? No. It's really scary. Zarkilla. You have no idea what you've got yourselves in. We can well, leave. Enlighten us. Oh, no. I will simply watch as the dark truth is unfair. Is it in our heads? Yeah. You're not sure. You're not sure if you're hearing it or if it's in your heads. And then the voice seems to go quiet. Um, I'm going to go over and just start like rubbing this ritual circle with my foot to yeah. try and break it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's painted on. It's like you can see it's painted on in pink um, blood. I might try and... Scorch it with a very tiny fireball. You just kind of like, yeah, you can use like prestidigitation or fireball and stuff like that. <coughs> I mean, fireball. I've got fire, little tiny fireball. What if fire is the thing that triggers it? It wouldn't be. I mean, are we in a storeroom? Uh, do you know? You're in a no. cellar, yes. And you can see the far end has been boarded up, but there is clearly like a cavernous tunnel that the boards are covering. Right, but but is this like stock for the shop? I mean, yes. In here? Yeah. So is there like I don't know a bucket of water or something? Like yeah, that? you can or, or like wine or oil. Yeah, you can easily find like there's probably some cheap wine. I guess having seen what what Lucius is trying to do, I guess I'll grab some liquid or something and, and just like, like and then scrub and, it. Uh, yeah. yeah, scrub it. Yeah, so. you can easily disrupt it. Yep. Can I um, take a look at one of their necklaces? Like, take a necklace yeah, off. Take it off. And yeah. then, like, can I cast identify on it? Yeah, you cast identify on it. It's a spell slot. Um, unless you're doing it as a ritual. It's a ritual. So it takes 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So you take 10 minutes and you're just studying this necklace. I'm just like, I imagine I'm just like gobbles down, staring at it intently. As you're staring at it intently, that, the woman's voice, there's not really words, but you just feel this horrid presence just clinging to you as you're looking at it. Um, it's, these necklaces are some sort of worshipper tool. Um, they're kind of similar to a holy symbol, but they also offer anybody who's devoted to callous or Zarkira, who is a deity or some sort of being that you don't really know much about. Um, whoever is devoted to them gets some minor benefits against uh, charm effects or fear effects. Um, but you have to be a dedicated worshipper of those beings to gain the benefit. And all three of them have one. Mm -hmm. We should... But they look old. <coughs> we should potentially cover our tracks because Senna crashed in the front door. Santa just looks like, she closes the trap door, she's like, yeah, there's like people checking out that noise I made, so. Uh, okay, well, uh, there's no reason for them to come down here, I guess. I kind of threw the trap door down, so hopefully they don't well, have this. your mage hand, can you use it through objects you can't see past? Uh, I don't think so. I think you need to see. Okay. Um, we need to put the carpet back on top, is what I was suggesting. Well, it moved it to the side. Okay. But. If someone does see the trapdoor and thinks to come down here, we should probably make it so they don't investigate further. We don't want just people heading down into this tunnel, potentially towards wherever it goes. Um, oh, is that where we're going? I, I mean, we can't go up back up there now. <clears throat> no. Uh, we, we are now people who are robbing a shop, as far as they're concerned. We've stopped a man being killed. Yeah, but they, don't know they, that, they, they might think that we're the ones trying to kill him. 
where we don't want them to come down and A, find this, and B, start investigating it themselves. And also you scrubbed out the ritual circle. Uh, well, yeah, that Just is a that. bit of it. <laughs> oh, you threw water on it, yes. Uh, something on it. Um, severely, there's maybe some traces of it, but it doesn't look like much like a ritual circle anymore. Do we want to talk to these girls or just go? I think we could take them with us. We might need to go through the boards to the rest of the tunnel, maybe? Um, I'm just thinking if someone comes down here, they're going to find us like this. Um, yeah. We just keep going. So we take All the right. girls with us. All right. Because, uh, yeah, we talk to them. Have you? They're going to follow us through the cave. They're tied up. I got mean, their hands bound. Anyone that investigates. Like the board's blocking it, or they like nailed into the wall. So when you go up and investigate them, no, they're actually, it looks like they were once like nailed into the wall, but several of them have been removed recently and are just now placed um, in the same position. So it looks like that they've been routinely moved, um, pulled back and forth. Well, we can just lift these up, go through, <coughs> place them back, and... <coughs> maybe if we leave the, maybe if we leave Bardwin here, he can be our alibi. Well, I mean, he was unconscious, but maybe they'll just think that it was another break-in. True. Okay. Story's been robbed before. Yeah. Can we wake him up? Just if they see me here, they're gonna definitely think I'm robbing the place. Racist. No, we can't wake them up, him up, because then we have to take the time to explain the entire okay. situation. Yeah. We we'll leave him. Just leave him there. Leave All him right. on the ritual circle that has tiny remnants left. All right. Uh, yeah. Covered so, in wine. Um, so, and then okay. I start like picking up like the board. Yeah, like I guess like um, Sano will pick one up one of the girls, like picking, the tiefling. Um, <laughs> she probably looks and she's like, Guardian, can you pick up the dwarf? She's a bit too heavy for me. Yeah, no problem. All right. Um, and then there's just the, the tiefling girl, uh, the human girl left. Like Sano's got one, Sentry's got the other one. I'm currently dismantling the plank. He's with you also one have hand, one arm. So, well, uh, how strong is Lucius? Uh, not very. 10? Is it higher than 10? Or 10? It's 13. 13. No, you, oh, wow, you work wow. out a little bit. Like, you're not like Aww. super tan. Maybe like, you had some sort of sport. Like, I guess because you trained to, you wanted to be a sky jouster, didn't you? I did. So I think that that would have involved, like, you would have had to have trained to ride a horse, and that's, you know, demanding, physically Across demanding. quite fragile, but actually. Yeah. Yeah. You've got a bit of muscle. There's a, there's you know, a, you're not there's buff, a body under but, those robes. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, he's trim. Oh. He's, he's not like, <laughs> he's not buff, he's a bit athletic. Yeah. So yeah, you can easily pick up this girl. He's like, the shit. He's like Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> six packs um, on six packs. Like, uh, uh, You're a bit more is. Zac Efron in High School Musical. <laughs> okay. Not Sporty, but not buff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can pick up the girl easily and you can carry her. So Quill, with one hand, yeah, because they're not nailed in anymore. You just move them to the side. Just picking up planks. Um, and there is a worn natural tunnel. Like it's been chipped away that you can see tunnel leading down. Um, and yeah, you can all enter the tunnel and it stretches on for quite a ways and it is pitch black. So anybody who does not have dark vision, you are effectively blind. Okay. Ooh. Is anybody struggling in this tunnel? Yeah, yes. I think yeah, I just I walked into a wall already. I put a dancing light in front of each person. Uh. It. <laughs> it's like a little torch. Yeah. Uh, well, well, to Santa doesn't need it. Santa's got dark vision, so. The century of dark vision. No, Echo used to do that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sauce bite. <laughs> <Yeah. spot. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> it's still a fresh wound. <laughs> put a light in front of people okay. that need it. Yeah. Well, the dancing lights generate enough light for you to see by. So with the dancing lights, you begin making your way down the tunnel, I guess? Like, are you trying to get further enough away? I think, that... yeah, like I'm putting the board, I put the yeah, boards put back the boards up to go yeah. through, and then we make some distance, make your way down. if the girls wake up. Yeah, yeah, okay. So you make your way down. It's maybe about like, I mean, you start going down and it just seems to go on and you can feel it kind of it is it goes down. deep down and then it kind of picks back up again. It kind of drifts to the side, drifts back to the other side. Um, it, it feels very haphazard. You also begin to notice two things about this tunnel. One, every now and then there are very strange metal struts keeping the structure of the tunnel. So in a mine shaft, you'd normally have like the wooden kind of support beams very hastily built from scrap metal, but a metal that none of you really recognize are these struts. Mm. Um, you also occasionally step on human bones. Oh, God. You begin to see, like, you know, a skull kind of just resting by the side, maybe with some other bones, like, you know, remnants of a corpse. Um, Remnants. You see, like, you <laughs> see broken daggers, broken swords, probably used as like digging tools um, that have carved away at the rock and the soil. Um, uh, 
I guess it's difficult to tell how fresh the bones are, but like old, really old. Okay. Old. I mean, they are bones. Um, yeah. The equipment is rusted. You know, uh, completely. Some parts. Occasionally, parts of the tunnel have like drips of water uh, coming down from below, above, and they form like these stagnant pools. And yeah, there's moisture and it's dank and yeah, just unpleasant. Do I have any direction sense of where it's going, or should I just say towards the lake? It's going towards the lake. <laughs> yeah. It's going towards the lake, that but it, it's taking a very strange path. Like whoever dug this tunnel wasn't really sure where they were going. Just that they should be going. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, um, the tunnel. Which is a little creeped out by this. It gets cold. And you begin to hear, it, well, at first it sounds like whistling wind, but then you just hear this same familiar voice like, people died here. You're going to die here. Release my girls. And then it disappears. Um, how is that voice following us? I don't like it. I'm not sure. Yeah, is it the necklaces, the other <clears throat> ones? Uh, yeah, can we take the necklaces off of all of yeah, them? Yeah, yeah. I assumed that you did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can we break them? Uh, we just leave them behind. Or we'll leave them? Well, we probably shouldn't leave them in case someone else picks them up. I mean, the, it, it, no one should be following us. Um, so if we leave them here, I mean, we can easily pick them up on the way back. But if, if they're communicating through those amulets, it's probably best that, we, that we, they don't track us with it. Yes. Um, it's been about 20 minutes. Cavern's still going on. Are they still unconscious? They are still. They'll be unconscious until up for an hour. They're dead. They're, they're effectively at zero hit points and they need to regain a hit point. They're not dead, but they're like automatically stabilized. But yeah, um, you suspect that uh, up until an hour, they'll regain consciousness. Um, uh, yeah, you carry on. If you just carry on, if you don't stop, after about, an, I'd say about 40 minutes of traveling, winding your way through these caverns. And there are points where the cavern shrinks down and Sentry, you and Sana are really having to kind of hunch and crawl through. The spaces become quite tight. You begin noticing more and more bones, more and more of these discarded tools, um, and more of these strange metal struts. And then eventually, you begin to see the cavern, a green glow coming from, oh. the cavern seems to open up into a room. Okay. Can I push forward? You're you just keep going, you're like, you're go, go, go. I think where everyone sees the glow, we kind of slow for a second. Yeah, but... I want to push to the front of the group. Okay, so Nova pushes to the front of the group. Um, cool. And a map is laid out in front of us. So, you emerge Very around. Sci-fi. I won't put everybody on the board just yet. Just Nova in front, yeah. Pretty much. Um, what, I love science, fight me. <laughs> Man, that's, yeah, that's the only reason. Now, <clears throat> so yeah, so you begin pushing your way near the front and you see this green glow and you see the where it breaks into this room, there is this black crystal, thick, thick black crystal that has been dug through into the earth itself. Mm -hmm. um, and just these strips of green light that occasionally pulse, cold, the whole thing, it's like almost freezing in here. Um, those of you who are not dressed properly, which actually I think all of you are at this yeah, point. I think we made sure. You're all it. dressed properly we fine. Upgraded. Um, and you just hear this kind of... I'm wearing white clothes. Hum, almost. Um, Quill, you would notice that kind of peering into the darkness with a little bit of light from the dancing lights and then the green glow that stretches mm. out into this corridor. There's what appears to be a campsite, um, but rather than a fire, there is a solid um, crystal kind of set into a brazier um, around which there are chairs, like wooden chairs, bed rolls. You can see some cloaks, some food, some water. There's also a lantern hanging there. Um, and the, the stone in the kind of uh, brazier is emanating heat and a very dull red light. Lucius, you would recognize this when you see it as a heat stone. It's like a common thing in, in the Sky Cities. It, it, provi it basically provides the same heat as a campfire, but it doesn't have any open flame. Hmm. Um, and you think for a second, Quill, you can hear something like figures in that room. So we're... 
So as you're pushing forward, Nova, you step into this room and see the same thing. You see this all and you see the, the familiar sights and it instantly transports you back to the skiff, the shuttle, the scout ship. And it's almost identical. The same thick black crystal hull, the same green power lines that run through. The floor has almost like a metallic grate feeling, but it's made from the same crystalline substance. Um, and you begin to feel Tiangong. You feel these senses of emotions pulsing through the palm of your hand from this blade. An odd sense of familiarity, but also fear. Mm. You can sense that the blade doesn't like this place, but it's also curious and it's also familiar to it in a way. Mm. Um, Is it about the same size as the skiff or, or bigger? bigger? Like how bigger. much bigger? Three? Significantly. Okay. The corridors are much wider. Um, you can see that, uh, yeah, just everything about it seems larger. Um, so we're, are we, we're inside of it now then? We're inside the... So you will step in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Tentatively. Tentatively. Yeah. Stealthily. So you emerge. What on earth is this? <laughs> Super apprehensive about this. Okay. This is like nothing I've ever seen. What your passive perception is 15 for eyesight, but for hearing and things like that is 20, right? 20, yeah. Okay. Um, what's your passive perception? What's everyone's passive perception, basically? Uh, 13. 13? 9. 9? Oh, 13. God. I'm not very wise, Quill. Okay. Huh. You kind of step in, and Santa kind of like winkles her nose a little bit, but nothing happens. And yeah, you just the the problem is, is your only source of light is this dull red light from the heat zone, and your dancing lights. So there are these long shadows, and you can see that the room itself, whilst barren, there are all these kind of nooks and crannies in the crystalline walls, and you can see up ahead this it begins to kind of curve out almost. Um, and in this kind of curved room, you can see. Maybe there are these like crystalline plates attached to the walls, like, you know, on strange metal with strange crystal buttons. Never, is this what you've seen before? It is. This is... I've been here before. Well, on the skiff, on a, on a, on a far smaller shuttlecraft, but it's exactly the same. The same technology, the same writing. This is very strange. Well, these, these are the ships that, that, that Starbane the remnant, yes. yes. Okay. Um, it feels evil. It doesn't feel good, no. No. Uh, like who uses black walls like this? It's very imposing, you know. Green as well. And green houses. There's nothing wrong with green. Nothing wrong with green, but when you mix it with black, I don't know much yeah. about fashion, but not like Lucius. But <laughs> you need you need light colours to let the light bounce around and like fill the, you know. It's like they knew they were the bad. It's guys. like it's constantly night time. Yeah. Um, I, I don't like this place at all. I've, I've seen these from the ground, but I never thought I'd ever step foot inside one. Well, ever. either way, we're not the only ones here at the campsite over there. Um, there's people who have been there recently, the, the orb thing. I'm going to walk over to the heat stone. Okay. So it's probably... Oh, uh, chilly. You probably walk over, it's like just in this corner. Um, we'll put like this barrel there. So oh, so it's very close to all of us in the entrance. <sighs> That's better. Can we take the heat stone with us? Is it portable? It's, or is it it's very big. Like it's like on a mounted brazier, like a uh, camp stove. You could carry hot. it, but it's about 20 pounds and carrying it is hot. While it's active, it's hot. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could carry it eventually, but yeah. Yeah, not it's, right. it's, no. it's heavy. It's about the same, like a big heavy pack. Should we deposit the people here? Uh, uh, yeah, we may as well, but are we worried about the rest of this ship? I mean... Well, we can't keep carting them around. I think... Yeah, you, you've also had to periodically drop them to rest your arms and things like that. Okay. Um, they're going to be... They're, they're hogtied, so you've got like hands behind their backs, their legs are bound. Should put some material in their mouth. They um, able to shout out. I guess so, but muffled. do we want to wait until they wake up so we can ask them before we just stride into this place? I guess so, but how... I, we can try, can't we? Well, it's better to get some information. Yes. I like to think Nova's already lost interest. Like the second she saw this, mm -hmm. she's just starting to walk and just wander. Not you, far from the group, you, but, but she's pushing not forward a little bit. Yeah, I'm not. She's not interested. So you in kind the of girls. get into this circular room, and you yeah. can see these panels, which you didn't really see in the scout ship before. Mm -hmm. They're sleek. The crystal is different. It's more of a light color, mm -hmm. and there are these buttons, like you know, big crystal buttons on the side. There is writing there, mm -hmm. um, which uh, you can you can just. Com Eyes comprehend language, yeah. Keeper, it's, yeah. You can read it and it's, you know, it seems to be things like power levels, you know, 
warning systems, damage reports, that kind of thing. It, but you, you press them and nothing happens. Um, Is there anything that kind of would give like a report of what happened, like a crash or like... Nothing no? seems okay. to be working. There's power. You get the sense of having seen these ships before that there's clearly something, because these green lights, these kind of like pulses of green light occasionally go past, but everything else seems dead. Mm -hmm. As you're kind of pushing these buttons, that's when you notice that from the kind of curved corners behind you, two figures leap out, one towards you, one almost flips through the air and Ooh, lands right crap. next to Lucius. Oh. Oh. oh, they're really creepy. So you can see these long flowing black robes that kind of just melded with the black uh, background of the hull and these familiar masks that you saw on the airship when you first crashed. Okay. Spinning purple <clears throat> staves that kind of almost hum with power. <laughs> Um, they're going to get to make uh, a surprise round because none Crap. of you got them with your passive perception, really? including Quill. No, I rolled way. two natural 20s. Wow. Wow. It was insane. I genuinely went, <laughs> <laughs> To be honest, I think if you rolled a natural one, Nova would be so entranced. She's just like... Oh. Yeah. 18 to hit Nova with the first attack from yes. her one. And then that's another 18 for the second attack. So two attacks hit you. Mm -hmm. Lucius, that's a 23 to hit you on the first one. Just. And that's a 23 to hit you on the second one um, with the advantage. So they're going to hit you uh, twice. They make two attacks, both of which are going to hit you. Um, so Nova, you're going to take in total 14. You're going to take 20 points of damage as both blows, bam, bam, as these staffs like crack into the side of you. Lucius, you're only going to take, wow, three, nine points of damage. Oh. That was a really bad damage roll. You kind of managed to slip yeah, real dark, bad. But these staffs kind of like slam into you and like, you know, squeeze. <laughs> Almost like vibrating shocks down your arms. Now everybody rolls initiative. God damn. Here we go. Here we go, boys. <laughs> Looks like these guys might have been on watch. Yes. <laughs> and heard stuff Possibly. coming. Sentry. Uh, seven. Quill. 15. Nova. 14. Lucius. 12. Okay. So sensing danger, Santa kind of like, ah, Lucius, and she kind of like dives forward. Um, she leaps over the bodies of the others. In fact, actually, she will try and make an athletics check to try and bounce. Um, so she like kips up onto the side and then lands in between them. She kind of yeah. jumps over his head. Um, she kind of just like, her powerful legs kind of just spring her up into the air. And then she's gonna try and attack um, two. One on, two on Lucius, one on Nova. So I'll roll both of those. So that is going to be two hits, one on each. Nice. So eight and eight. Bam. That's handy to know. So you watch as Santa just slams these two kicks, bam, bam, into the sides of them and then lands in the middle. You can see that whenever she fights, her hands are always by her head and she almost exclusively kicks. She just uses her legs the whole time. Um, Quill. Um, okay, I saw, uh, I guess, both of them attack. So I saw the one really deep hit. Kim, Nova. Nova. Um, yeah, Nova. I'm pretty injured. So I will do a uh, healing word. Oh, thank you. At level. Can I do healing word at level two? Yeah, sure. It becomes 2d4 plus your whiz. Yeah. So whiz. plus wisdom both times? Uh, no, it's 2d4 plus wisdom. Okay, two, two, six. Six HP back to Nova. Yeah. Thank you. Bit garbage. And that's bonus action for healing work? That's a bonus action, but because I spent a spell slot. You can um, cast cantrips though. But oh uh, yeah, I will do a sacred flame. Okay. Uh, which I've got now. Okay. Uh, and that would be on the one that hit Lucius. Okay. So Dex save. Yes, absolutely. Dex saving through, that is a 17. Yeah, that passes. <laughs> okay, so you kind of um, throw the flame out and this robed figure, you see their, their gray and black robes, they just kind of move to the side. His head turns on you um, and you just hear a... The Aarakoka is, is some sort of spellcaster. Make sure we deal with him next. I like, the, I like the exact same phrase was said in the first episode. Yeah, <laughs> yeah seems to be. Uh, Nova. It's a good callback. Oh, so you yeah. get slammed from behind from this thing and you spin around and you see this remnant mask with this purple light in this single visor helm. I'm um, just looking down at you with this like glowing purple staff. Uh, it's, it's a metal staff, but it has like glowing purple energy. I'm just gonna shout, we come in peace. <laughs> <Out of> <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then Hexblade curse him. Just been kicked okay. twice in the head. <laughs> I'm very dizzy right now. <laughs> yeah. So you Hexblade curse him and say we come um, in peace. And then I'm gonna. Ah! And, then, <laughs> and then I'm just gonna attack him with uh, green flame. Yep. Blade. Blink Sounds blade. Good. I can't say that ever. Yep. Just say um, something that sounds like it, like I do. Green flame blade. Ooh, ten. Ten is not enough. He just blocks the knife with the staff, um, and the other one's not close enough for you to, to have damaged anyway. Um, but yeah, he's just like, we'll decide about that. Take them to Demos. Demos? Um, Lucius. Or... I'm going to <laughs> throw a chromatic orb. At this one in front of you. One in front of you. <laughs> acid. It's okay. going to be a tiny acid mm -hmm. ball. Yep. Wow. Uh, 20. 20 hits. Nice. For the first time, Chromatic Orb has hit! Oh my hey. god! I think so, yeah. Is that a world first? So, is this first level you cast it at, yeah? Second. Okay. That's right. Bitch. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember you saying that, but sure. <laughs> Thanks, DM. That's all right. So that is a uh, 4d8. 4d8. Oh. Eight. This is acid. 16. Oh my god. <gasps> uh, 31. No, more than that. Oh, oh my, my god. god! 16 plus what Eight. equals 31? 24. He rolled 23. three eights and a seven. Yeah. Oh wow. So That's 16, 24, 30, isn't it? 31. 31 total of the damage. So 31, Ooh. you... Wow. He hasn't taken any... Oh, he did take damage from Santa's kick. You, this ball explodes over him and you hear a... What? <laughs> and he just melts. Like this goo just covers him and his form just disintegrates. The black, like, metal armor just disintegrates. I almost mimic You see, like, a pale screaming. armor. Back in the, <laughs> the other one takes. Now, you cast that second level. Because uh, we clarified yes, this. Two, the so chromatic. It's two plus it's charisma. Plus, it's the level of the spell plus charisma mod in right. ass damage to the other one. So that's three, uh, five. So five. That one also like something that splashes on, and he's like, ah, ah, and he's like trying to get it off as he's fighting uh, Nova. But you just melt this guy in front oh. of you, like he just oh, evaporates. Wow. Is that Ooh. the one that I cursed? Uh, no. no, the one you, the one... yeah, it's the so the one in fighting Lucius just yeah. melts. He's not there. Um, the other one looks damage. to you, and he is going to. He'll make his attacks against you, and then he's going to run. So he makes two attacks. So we have a. Uh, 14 to hit. Nope. Uh, 22. Yeah. So you're going to take <laughs> what is that? seven points of damage. Yeah. And then yeah, he, as a good. bonus action, he is going to disengage. 5, 10, 15, 20. Um, and you can see him beginning to disappear <gasps> down a corridor. No. Uh, I which want I've... the smashy smash. <laughs> Modular. You still can. You just got to catch up with him. Modular. Ooh. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 30, just and then he'll use his movement action and vanishes. Oh, oh. Sorry. so he dips around oh, the corner. Yeah. Okay. God damn. Okay. <clears throat> okay, fine. Um, are we still in initiative? Yes, so sentry. Hello. Um, I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on Nova. Oh, bless you. So you children. go 5, 10, you move up to Nova, yeah. and then cast Cure Wounds. Yar. So that's a D8 plus your charisma plus modifier. Plus 2. Plus 2, perfect. Yeah. Nine. Nine. And then you've still got, so you went 5, 10, 15. You've got 15 foot mo more of movement, so you can go 5, 10, 15 if yeah. you wanted to carry on as well. Yeah. There you go. Thank you, Sentry. That's all so you work. kind of run up, heal, keep running. Yeah. I want to find that guy. <laughs> okay. I want him. Drive well, by healing. got like a renewed <laughs> militaristic. <laughs> like now that you've seen these guys. Oh yeah, 10, I'm like, did he's got, yeah, did yeah, going straight yeah, down, Terminator yeah, style. I'm going to find these guys. 40. Santa rockets forward. Down the corridor, she sees everything. Modular. <laughs> Oh, um, nice. Got two. I can tell. I love grid-based modular maps. <laughs> God, it's great. <laughs> so like she calls so back. Right now. She's like, he's running, he's going down the corner. Um, and you can see her running forward. She has dark vision, so she doesn't need the light from uh, Lucius uh, to see. Um, okay. Quill. I mean, I can go 30 feet. Um, 5, 10, get me... 15, 20, 25, 30. So that's your move action. So if I was to action dash, yep. I could bonus You could go another 30 still. feet. But then I can bonus action yeah. after that. and you can bonus action, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the only bonus actions I have are Shield of Faith and Healing Word. Uh, but I'll, I'll bonus action dash anyway. Yes, yeah, so you action like, dash. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, and 
I may as well cast a shield of faith on myself being at the front. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you just... What with your ring? Yeah, that's a bonus action to activate his ring. Nice. So if you didn't want to cast oh. Shield of Faith, you could just activate yeah, the barrier. Yeah, of course. Ring. Yeah, uh, yeah, that'd be what I'd do. So you kind of clutch your your quilt, your feathered hand, yeah. and this oh. spectral shield kind of uh, emerges. Flick my hand. Get that bird a shield. <laughs> wow. Nova. <laughs> Awful. Uh, I guess I'll just try and catch up. Uh, you know what? You know what they say about Quill though. He never freezes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that line. <laughs> With 30 feet, please. So you go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So those of you without dark vision, you're now plunging ahead. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't have dark vision, it, again, you just get this very faint, dim green light that's oh, just not barely enough to see. Is... They're, they were all... I have to actively move them now. Yes, to actively move them. Oh, shit, okay. So I'm whilst close. you were going down the corridor, is that he's just doing it as an action, just like as a cantrip. He's just constantly summoning them. Cool. Um, concentration. It might be. Um, but yeah, so yeah, you are. just you s storm ahead, and you can now see Nova. Yeah, so there is actually um, so the corridor actually splits as well. So the same on the other side. Yeah, okay. and you can see that again. It's all this same crystalline hull um, that descends down. Um, We've got a bigger thing of the map if we need to use it. So, but right now you're just chasing the guy. So we'll can zoom I in. See this guy, or is this a bulkhead? Uh, no, no, these are all open. So this oh, is okay. all open corridors. I no, um, see that far, but yeah. No, it's fine. We can, in fact, do something like... Well, I mean, we're not going to go that way. <laughs> no. Not yet, anyway. I'll wait until everyone's moved up, and then I can remove that one. I can't... No, I can't. I was going to... I can't use Mage Hand to, like, trip him. No, if you have a ranged spell like Eldritch Blast, you could Eldritch Blast. Oh, yeah, I do have ranged stuff. So I'm going to Eldritch Blast him. Okay, there you go. Eldritch um, Blast! How is he... Eldritch Blast or Toll the Dead? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Oh, goddamn bell again. 25, he has been injured. I'm going to toll the dead. So you get ah. the... You <laughs> ding. Goddamn bell every time. What? Every, every combat is just a moment halfway through where it's just... Ding. Ding. It hasn't worked for the so, last... So, saving throw for me, I believe. 14 was... Uh, 2. Oh! I actually did a thing. I believe a uh, D12. D12. Oh, That's shit, this nice. one, right? It's the big one. No, it's not Bells big. are working in this play. Oh. 3! Three points. <laughs> so you see him like hold a hand up to his head, um, but that's about it. God damn it. Um, damn it. Lucius. Okay, I'm going to run as far as I can. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Yep. Just. A, I, he will have curve? cover. It does curve, but Quill is in front of it and I will give him some cover. <laughs> okay. Because Quill is like, you go like, get out of the way, Quill! Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm a big bird. I'm gonna, with I think confidence as big now, as possible. Cast chromatic <laughs> orb acid, yeah. level one. Range spell attack. Uh, again. Yep. Ah, oh, God. Two. Quill duck. Uh, fifteen. <sighs> Would have hit him, but the cover. You have to like aim it, and Quill kind of just gets in the way. Oh, you just Quill. kind of move the chromatic orb out of the way. Yeah. Um, oh, my hair as it fine. sails past, it probably no. sizzles some of like Quill's feathers no. and then splashes against the hull. You notice that as it hits the black hull, it doesn't melt the hull. The crystal just doesn't melt at all. Um, but yeah, unfortunately he had plus two AC because of the cover. It would have hit him otherwise. Is there no uh, splash from that or no? No. no. Okay. It just doesn't hit. No, nope. but um, you did cast a spell, so you can do um, one be. plus uh, charisma mod. Yes, so five total. Is it plus Two. four charisma? It's you cast it at level one. I did cast it at level one, yeah. So one four. plus three. So you manage to like pull off some of the color as the spell begins to fade. You look at your orange clothing, pull off some of it, and hurl another glob of acid towards him, which does hit him. Um, on his go, he will step further down the corridor. Oh, stop running. No. Oh, Come man. back, chicken wing. <laughs> He will move further down the corridor, which I don't think anybody can just see just yet. But you, he doesn't run as far, um, and you hear him begin, Quick, we've got intruders! Somebody, come and help, quick, now! Oh, great, it's gonna be oh, no. more. Ten, come out. <laughs> Kylo Ren emerges from the darkness. <laughs> Bury the past. <laughs> uh, Kill it if you have to. So, uh, Sentry, so you'll go. Um, I'm going to keep on running. 
You keep on running. Keep on running. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Nice. So 5, 10, yeah. 15, 20. Action dash. Action dash. That's a Donald's theme tune. I'm Jenna. loving it! <laughs> yeah. Man, he was like, yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. He was like 5, 10, 15, 20, yeah. He'd basically be about Oh, there. so close. So you're so right in front close. of him. You can see he's taking a defensive stance. Like, like he's literally, you know, taking yes. a defensive stance, but holding his ground. Cool. Um, and then banging. It's okay, your axe is so long, you get attack of opportunity for 10 feet away. No. That's, That's how that strange works. Strange shape for a ship. Yeah. I'm gonna move Lucius just off of it a little bit. And then we can Cool. Eh. So you're like five feet away from him, so not eh. quite. Not quite. Damn. Although do I have any... Although I have got my flame on, so I can just You burn. could do that, but you dashed, so you can't yeah. do that this turn. Unless you got any bonus that, action? That dashing was my bonus action. Just it's your me. action to oh, dash. Right. So it's move and then action to dash, and oh, then you've I got see. a bonus action left. Cool. Does, is the flame lance a bonus action or is it an action? Well, look at. I think it's an action. Just tell them some hurtful things. Yeah. I think it's under Your mother Five, smells! 10, 15, 20, 25, Elderberries. 30, Elderberries. 40. Oh, yeah. uh, oh, actually, can she okay. dash as a bonus action? Yes, she can dash as a bonus action. Boop! Yeah. Okay, so Sana just. So Sana just jumps over sentry oh. and then pummels him in the face. Yes. Nice. Ooh, bad rolls though. Only one hits, unfortunately. So she gets one kick in. You can see him like using his staff as she just kind of like spins her body trying to kick in. However, that was a max eight damage plus two, ten. So she delivers like one solid blow into his chest and you hear some ribs snapping underneath the robes. Um, and you can hear she's probably just like, where's the girl? And poof, kicks him in the side and he's just Ugh! grunts. Um, Sentry okay. and Senna, so we'll roll a new initiative for this guy. Oh, another guy's coming in. <laughs> uh, Quill. Um, I mean, I guess I'll round the corner, and so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Um, I guess I'll go 30, so I'm in, like, right in front of him, and I'll use a lightning lure. Okay. So that's just uh, strength save but he does take a d8 of damage anyway. Uh, well, if he passes, you don't think he, I don't think he takes any damage. Um, Generally for cantrips, if he succeeds on the save. Yeah. Oh, and then, t so what did he get? Uh, I rolled a natural 20. <laughs> uh, okay, so he takes six damage. No, I'm <laughs> he he <No>. passed. <laughs> yeah, so you kind of lash out with a lightning lure. It probably hits the tip of his staff and he flicks it around and then the lightning kind of becomes loose. I mean, okay, that was, Oh, that was an action, not a bonus action. Yes. Can I just claw him? You can't, it's an action to make an attack? Uh, okay, I'm here now. Nova. Yeah, I'm gonna move up uh, 30 Five, feet. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I probably can't see him to Just, no, he's around him. the corner. You can see the group of people surrounding this guy. Um, did I hear anyone else? No. You heard him calling for help, but you haven't heard anything yet. You can make a perception check if you want. I'm just wondering whether or not to dash someone a bit more in the room. Sure. Can I perception check and dash? Yes. 15, six, 14. Okay, so that's as you're running. So move where you're gonna be moving to. And then I'll tell you what you hear. Uh, five, five, yeah. 10, 15, 20, probably like here. Okay. Just in the middle of like the okay. Yeah. So as you get there, yeah, you can. It sounds like mechanical whirring, like a um, and footsteps coming from this way. Can I shout or am I? Off? Yeah, sure, you can shout. Uh, guys, I think there's more people Lucius. coming. Oh, actually, no. Sorry, before Lucius. Some sort, it looks to be a floating oh, cool. series of mechanical parts. Forgive the Star Wars miniature. Um, uh, okay. As this floating kind of mechanical sphere with all sorts of bits, kind of chains and things like begins floating into the room. Um, and it begins drifting towards this uh, immense one. 13. Um, and there's that. So, what is it like? 
And then as it seems, it kind of spins and you see this glowing purple eye focuses on Sana and two blasts of purple energy kind of fly out. It's a mecha beholder. Um, one of which hits. Does uh, it look like a mecha beholder? It, not quite a full beholder, like the sphere of a beholder with a central eye. Yeah. But then instead of stalks, it's got like little kind of like clippers and like little antenna and stuff like that. Yeah, but um, it's... it's Ooh. She's dead. She's dead. You watch as this blast catches Santa in the shoulder, spins her almost completely around, scorching her white fur, like this kind of fur on her body, like on her skin color, she doesn't have fur. This kind of like massive blast as she takes 15 points of damage. As she's like, oh shit! And she kind of spins around um, as this thing begins drifting closer towards it. Now Lucius. <coughs> Oh, so you're not Dash. even in the same corridor. 5, 10, oh, there you go. 15, 20, 25. Gonna go there. Okay, so we're all in the same room now, finally. Right, so yeah, and you see this scene. You see this thing floating. You can see the guard is like barely, he's kind of swaying on his feet. Um, yeah, very uh, badly injured. There's a bonus action. <gasps> yeah. I'm going to cast Healing Spirit on this square here, where what? Santa is. It's a new spell. It's basically, I call for... Is that on the Sorcerer spell list? Yeah. Conjuration spell. Yeah. Ooh, what healing? It was on the list, so I took it. I mean, fair enough, it was on the list. That is very surprising to me, but sure. I'll call check forth. that. <laughs> yeah. For now, I've got yeah, it. Yeah, for now. Yeah, sure. Call forth a Nature Spirit. Okay. To soothe the Wounded. So the intangible spirit appears in a space that's a five-foot cube. Okay. See within range, it's going to be on. We'll use um, this It looks like merchant. a transparent beast or fey creature. Well, we're going to use this man. So where is it? Here? <laughs> Just, it's it's going to be on Santa's okay. tile. Okay. So until the spell ends, which is a minute. Um, it's concentration. Whenever me or a creature I can see moves into the spirit space for the first time, you cause the spirit to restore 1d6 hit points. So anyone that goes through that square can be mm -hmm. healed one. Or day. starts their turn there, I believe, yes. as well. Great. I can, I can move as a bonus action too. There so we go. Sana gets 1d6 on her turn. Well, damn. How uh, about that? I hate to be that person. Go on. But it says Druid or Ranger. Yeah. I was gonna say it's a but very added, odd spell that you I went to get. manage spells. Yeah, no, I I get it that it's on the spell list. Unless but. you have an ability that allows you to learn other class things, because I do. Like yeah, I, 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 he I, does, but only it only allows him to pick spells that deal cold or acid damage. Okay. It's on my list here. That's very odd. We'll say it's there for now. Because yeah, we'll fix that for future, because you yeah, that that is very odd that sorcerer would get a healing spell. I have a but for now, temporary connection to the Fae. You have a temporary connection to the Fae that you, you summon. Very strange. <laughs> um, appearing from around the corner. 20, Another boy. Five, you see, and it seems to be it was kind of it's chasing after this thing. It like points over and it's just like Guard, destroy them! You and he points to the other guard, like, move! Get out of here! We'll we'll slow them down. Um, the other one will disengage. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. I'm back, I need to kill you and have um, a hit point. And then that's it. <laughs> you know, he's running. He's, you can see he's limping at this point. Um, I want and your then hit he'd, points! He'd dash to go the rest Stop of the distance. Dashing. No, he's running. <laughs> Playing these guys smart for a change. What? So Santa Riggs gains 1d6. Um, what was it? 1d6 plus what? He's talking about. Oh, Here just 1d6. Just 1d6? Yeah. She gets one. Oof. Oh, fuck. Um, Can I roll it? <laughs> no. I roll My it. My spell! Well, too bad. I already rolled it. Uh, so Sun takes that, but she will then... Um, I mean, she's still got a bunch of hit points left. She'd probably still engage. She took a bad hit, but she's, she's okay for now. She's a fighter. She'll move up to the droid thing. She's actually going to move up to here, and then three attacks against it. Yeah. So that is plus five. So we got a 14, an 11, and a 16. So, oh, only one of those hits. Sana. But she does do nine points of damage as she kind of like kicks upwards, kind of like bicycle kicks it into the underside of this floating mecha beholder um, as it slams in. Uh, after that, Quill. Uh, okay, I will do a... Uh, 
Fuck, what was it? Oh, I was going to run up to Sana and do another healing word. Through no, I don't need. I don't need to. You don't need to for the healing word. It's ranged. <clears throat> so Are bonus damaged? action. Are you damaged? Me? Uh, barely. Um, he moves through the square. If he it? if he moves, yeah. Oh, I'm totally doing that. Oh, I mean, if I know what that does. Yeah. Like sure. You saw it happen to Sana, I guess. True. Do I? I wouldn't roll. One. Would I? But one, sure. Um, so I heal her for one d four. So. Three plus, plus whiz. two, so five. Five, okay. Um, so she gets that. And then with my Axion, I well, Sacred Flame. Uh, On. Can I, well, can I see the guy? Yes, you can see the new guy. Uh, the where do you guy? move to? Well, if you're just on the spirit, no. But if I enter that space, I get the healing. So yeah, you I could move if you want. Run right through. Yes, yeah, so you I'll, could go like five, 10, 15, 20. Like, yeah, dip behind. Sana, mm -hmm. I guess with an attempt to see. So you'd have to move to about here. Yeah, so can yep. I see the boy, the yep. old boy? The boy. Okay, and I will... We've got the fine 10, 15, Sacred Flame. Yep. So he does a deck save. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, Give me a reason to have picked the spell. Uh, that's 12. She fails. Three damage. That's enough. Oh. Yes! Okay, so crap. you kind of, <laughs> as he's running, you can see him desperately running. And up ahead, you can see the corridor seems to maybe, in the dim light, just split off into several rooms. Ooh. He's like running, and you just catch him in the back with these feathers, these like flaming feathers that you launch yeah. from your, your winged arm. And he just collapses forward. I feel a little tickle. And you get some healing, don't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, so your Hexblade Curse target dies. So that's Quills go done. Nova. Can I pass through the healing thing? Uh, 10, yep. Why not? And Roll a d6. Yes. Uh. One, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Bullshit spell, I'm glad yep. I don't have it. <laughs> um, Plus and 10. Can I cast, uh, so can I just go the other side, so I'm still at range. So yeah, so like here? A little bit further away. Mm -hmm. Maybe feel a bit closer. Yep. Can I cast heat metal on the metal orb yeah. thing? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It just it, it affects it. It yeah. has no way of not being on not being heated. It's metal. So that's two D eight. Sure. Yep. Nice. It's exhaust work as fast as they can, but there's only so much heat they Ten can. Ten damage. Ten damage. Nice. Oh, damage. So yeah, you just you can see this metal beginning to superheat and warp, um, and the cr it doesn't make any noise. It just continues to float. Um, but yeah, you watch as it begins to. Uh, nope. It's go. Santa will get an attack opportunity as it goes. Actually, no. It will go there. She kicks it. It yeah. flies across and lands at a goal. Nope. Santa will get an attack opportunity. She, she misses. I rolled a six. Damn. So she goes to swing, but this thing moves kind of quite quickly. As it kind of reaches this middle point, you hear this as this pulse of like thunderous energy, this high-pitched whine erupts from it. Can all of you make constitution saving throws, Everyone. please? Woo. Yes. Oh, natural one. Oh, fuck. Oh, oh fuck. What's it like? Uh, result? Six. 22. Two with an actual one. Nine. Nine. Anybody who got under 11, so everybody but Sanna and Lucius, oh no, Sanna and Nova, uh, you're going to take four thunder damage, not really a lot. Oh. They didn't do a lot. Um, but you can see it's just emitting this horrid noise from its current position. Mm. Uh, Lucius. Okay. If I have a concentration spell and I cast another spell, do I have to do a concentration Hang spell? Hang on. I forgot sentry last turn. You Hello? should have had a go. Okay. So take it now. Okay, cool. Um, can I uh, move up to uh, next to the healing dude? Yep. So you step on him. And roll it. Like, like, here. Go here. Yeah. Yep. And then I'd like to. You get use... three HP. Oh, thank you. I don't think you've taken any damage, but sure. <laughs> yeah. I took a little bit just the then. Oh, just now, yeah. Okay. Cool. And I'd like to use my flame lance on the middle thing. No. So you're just going to aim it like this way, like. Yeah, yeah sure. So uh, remind me. That's a DC 13. Deck save. Yeah. Uh, eight. It's quite nimble, it kind of goes to move out of the way, but you you adjust the trajectory. Uh, it is DC 13. Yep, failed. I got an 8. And I get 3d10 fire damage. Oh, roll it, and then you take a certain amount of cold, don't you? Oh, it was on the floor. Let's assume it's a 10. No. No, that was a 1. So it's no, re-roll re -roll the 1 on the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't, we don't keep dice on the floor oh. here. 0 is a 10. Ooh. 
26. Wow, fucking hell. So you kind of take aim, 30. and how much cold damage do you take? Six. Six. So you, you aim, you kind of aim this uh, the laser, you kind of target it, it goes to dodge, you redirect, this blast of fire in this straight red line just erupts mm. from your gauntlet. It, you watch as it melts away half of its armor, hits its inside, and it just nice. in the air, destroyed. Sweet. Oh, boy. Yeah. Get wow. I mean, out of here! 30, like 26 damage and taking only 6 yourself, that's worth it. Lucius. Worth it. That's worth it. I'm gonna walk. That's some good work. So Faithing just in front. <laughs> so you get d6. Yep. I think everyone's just dancing around this You'll bay. See. It's like, yeah, I see more of you, heal me. <laughs> I see, so many rolls for you. Healing spells. Spirit is a pretty broken spell in the game. Like, it was kind of one of those spells where loads of people online were like, it's broken. Okay. Well, it's too powerful. It's really strong. Because so you can just keep like dancing you. through it. La, la, la. So could you with 30 feet, 30 feet of movement, just five feet in, five feet out, five feet I think in. you can only get its benefit once what? per turn, so but it's, per turn. it's also when you start your turn in it. So you, on your turn, just you move into it. it, you get D6 hit points. Your next turn, you get another D6 hit points. Like, you just keep doing it every turn. Harris rule, it's banned. Yeah, it's not great. Anyway, I don't think what was your so uh, and then what was your action? I would like to go to my spells. Probably just do a lightning lure. Actually, I'll do a fire bolt on him. Yeah, you can't lightning lure anyway. Yeah, why not? It's too far away. Okay. No wait. Shut up. Yep. Me. So Shut up. Fire bolt. <laughs> Seven. Uh, Twelve. Twelve. Not enough. He kind of <laughs> dodges to the side. You can see he's quite nimble <laughs> um, as you launch this bolt out. Uh, his go. Oh man, you're all very strong, but. No, we're not. Come play with us. Mm. They're very weak. I suddenly, I suddenly like open my eyes and it's like really wide bird eyes. <laughs> I'm so all, weak. It's all dark. <laughs> yes, it's very dim. So that anybody without dark vision, but you've all been getting quite close to him. So, but you can see that, like for example, this. I probably should have had Quill roll with disadvantage because he was quite far away in the dim light. But um, I mean, I was. 10 feet away. No, when the, when you when killed the, the guy down thing. here. Oh no, he was he was just here. Was he? He was yeah, he wasn't that far away. Okay. Sure. Um, um, plus he was right standing up right in front of the light and everything was illuminating him. Sure. Also, I'm a bird man. <laughs> sure. I'm a bird man. <laughs> also, he's dead now, so whatever. <laughs> yeah. Also, if I rolled disadvantage, I would have failed. <laughs> <laughs> he's back. <laughs> I think I killed him. <laughs> I heard I a noise. He went 30, 40, 10, 15, 20. Down these so he just runs. Mm -hmm. He's a so runny boy. He dipped around walk, the yeah. corridor a little bit as well. Sentry, you get another go because I forgot you the previous turn. No so worries. We're back uh, on proper initiative cool. now. Cool. So can I move up more? Five, you got to use my dash as a bonus 20, action 20, as well. 30, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Oh, Ooh, you're just in range. So but close. it takes your action to yeah. dash up to him. Um, but you get an attack of opportunity if you. Oh, hang on. Yes. Might have a bonus bonus. You can see that he stood in front of. So, Sentry, when you go on. Action. Bonus actions. I can do. You can do a spell. I can but do a you, spell. But you have to cast it onto your. And then the next time yeah. you hit him. But you could do it now. Hmm. I mean, save yeah. your bonus action next turn. It would count for your attack of opportunity, wouldn't it? Mm. Yes, it would. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I might do that then. I might cast Thunderous Smite on my axe and so get rid of begin powering up your axe. Yeah. Yeah. Staring in the face, just like... <laughs> so you can see, he runs up to what you can see is a crystalline looking door. Um, it's cool. a slightly different shade to the black hull. Um, but you can see there's this crystalline door with like a faint outline, uh, you know, in front of it. And he's rushing up with a hand towards like the door itself. Okay. Um, and you're like chasing after him like yep. a murderer. With a big lightning axe. Senna, I do not like these guys at all. They need to 20, go 20, away, 20, please. 20, 30, 30, yeah. 35, 40. Bonus action dash. She's got one use of that left today. And then oh. she's going to kick him three times. Go for it. Go, Senna, go. Go, Senna. Only one hit. I keep rolling really badly on her now. Uh, however, that's max damage. So he takes uh, 11 points. Nice. Um, yeah, so she just gives another swift kick and he like stumbles, but he's still trying to reach for this door. Uh, Quill. Uh, I mean, I'll, yeah, I'll charge up as well, but I'll do 20, only 30. 15, 25, 30. Um, and I'll do a, I'll put a shield of faith on, um, sentry, I guess. Okay. Oh, thank you. Uh, 
I mean, it's either that or I could, actually I could just magic missile him three times. You could do that. And there's no roll to hit, so the dark. Yeah, I'll, I'll just you. do that. I think. Cool. So one magic missile. So is it plus one on each one? Yes, it's one d four plus one three times. Three, four, seven. Uh, another three, so ten Dimaggios. Ten Dimaggios. Bam, bam, bam! He gets slammed by these three missiles, and you can see him now sort of like still trying to defend himself, still standing, just just reaching out for this door. Just wait until he moves out of your Nova. Range. You're gonna launch. Can I run through the <laughs> yeah. Launch him through D6, the door. D6, roll D6 drop. That's five. Where are you going, Kim? Two. Uh, falling down where I think 10, everyone else 15, is. 15, 20, 25, 30. Hi, Nova. Um, so you can still see him, but he'll have cover, similar to when uh, Lucius tried to attack him. So if you wanted to Eldritch Blast him, for example. No, can I Can I just move up a bit yeah, more? Yeah, you just want to action dash? Yeah. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, so you're next yeah. to the tree. How much yep. did you roll? Two. Two. Okay. Right, the droid is dead. Lucius. I too will move until I'm in visual, visual range. 25, yeah, 30. Through the, uh... So you can probably move there and you have a slightly point. better angle. Let's. He's gone now. Yeah, he's yeah. gone. Bye, that Baker. broken spell you'll never yeah, see again. Yeah, we're going to use that again. If you're hoping to see that one again, <laughs> you're another, out of luck. Another OP sorcerer spell. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll cast another fireball in this direction. Thank okay, you. range attack roll. Uh, you have dark vision, so you're not at disadvantage. But he does have cover. Yes. 18. Uh, even with the cover, that still hits him. So nice. this time you actually line it up. You throw it past Sentry, this f bolt of flyer whizzes past your head. Cool. Sorry. Um, and smashes into him. <laughs> My bad. So it's, I believe, D10. Oof. Seven. Oh. <clears throat> Hits him in the chest, and you can see him looking down. It's this scorched, you know, armor. You can see that whatever armor was there has been partially melted, burnt away. You can see pale human flesh underneath, but he's still staggering. Um, and he is going to reach out and he hits, the, touches his hand against the door. And then which starts moving slides in. Slides open. Um, Wait. Because if he starts Where moving two in. more of them Wait. are oh, currently. They're right. sat on like bed rolls. My fire. Yes. A, you, it's acid. cold and acid, yeah. and it's it's a cantrip. It only works on first uh -huh. level spells and above. But it's okay because what's about to happen is going to be incredible. So <laughs> the door the slides room. open. <laughs> you see these two others. He's like intruders, and then he takes a step. Yeah. Well, no, he can disengage. He doesn't have to take. But he action. doesn't though. No, he would. Though. <laughs> oh, he would spend the scene. I'm I'm no. just, like he opens the door and then poof, and flies in. And that he standing he behind him. spins around and keeps his defensive staff as he backs up. Essentially, he's like looking at him. Nice. Uh, but no, he would. Smite. He would yeah, smartly there. disengage. It's ready to go. Is it like an elevator or a room? It's a room. They got oh bedrolls. God, it's it's a room. It's like bedrolls. You can see there are four bedrolls. Um, various like food equipment, a small table. Uh, it looks like the other two were like playing cards or something on it. Um, they snatch up their staff. Space cards. Yeah, space cards, yeah. Um, <laughs> 3D chess. Oh my god. Space chess. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> Star Trek style. Santa will leap in. Uh, Santa just walks pump. in, kicks everyone in the head, leaves. Okay. <laughs> Door shuts. So two hits. <laughs> she hits the one guy who was standing up, not kills him. Nice. You Yay! just hear like a neck snap as she just like bang. And kicks him in the helmet, and then the other one, um, she misses once and then hits him again. You say the door shuts behind her. No. So we don't hear anything, it's just. Ah! 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 Yeah. <laughs> the door doesn't shut, it stays open. Door opens. Yeah. It stays open. Kicked him. Um, quill. Uh, okay, I'll, uh, yeah, 30 feet forward as best I can. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So I've got a range on both of them? Yeah, you can see in the room. Yeah. This one will, will have cover, this one won't. Fine, I'll hit the one. Well, I'm going to magic missile anyway. No, I'm not. I'll, I'll guiding bolt the one that doesn't. I can see best. Um, sure. So. Do I even have metal on them? Um, you can't really tell underneath their heavy robes. When you did see the other guy that like got melted, he did seem to have metal armor underneath his thing. But remember, Tiangong, it's only heat metal once a day. Sixteen. Oh, okay. um, say that. I'm pretty sure it is. It says the three Gangwin's charges. It says three charges. Maybe, but then I'm sure I put it on the mending thing. Gadwin's hammer. What Gadwin's hammer? Yes. So heat metal costs three charges, and it has three charges per day. But the mending cantrips cost one charge each time you use them. 
So I'm so it of... has three charges. Mending is one charge. Yeah. Heat metal is all three charges okay. to spend. Okay. Cool. Uh, so I got a uh, sixteen to hit. Yes, hits. Bam, four d six. Uh, not as good that time. Seven, eight, eleven damage on the one that I could see best. Yeah. So he gets boof, 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 pummeled with the guiding bolt. Uh, and then I can't do anything as a bonus action. Okay. So I don't think I can anyway. Um, okay. Nova. That's fine. Can I uh, move to this corner here? This corner? Uh, just a little bit back. Just a little bit. There we go. Um, and I guess I will Eldritch Blast. Okay. Uh, I was going to say, you guys are probably running short on spell slots now. <laughs> I've actually. got one left. I mean, I had no <laughs> spell slots from the whole Acorn Bale debacle. Oh. Um, hey, um, 12. 12 to hit, doesn't hit. You whoosh, duck Bugger. underneath it. That's it. Uh, Lucius. I under my breath. Oh, damn it, I could have barred an inspiration <laughs> bonus action. I keep forgetting about that. You can. I keep forgetting I am You have bard. three of those. Yeah. Or two bard. of them or something like that. Uh, two, yeah. You just keep forgetting. Bard. And that's a bonus action. If you don't have a bonus, like, if you're like, oh, I don't know what to do, I've got bonus action. Yeah, I, I just literally clicked on actions, bonus actions. There it is. Ice knife in this corner. Okay. So roll to hit the first target. Nine plus five, it's 14. Doesn't hit him. Fuck me. But then they have to make a <laughs> reflex save, yes? A dexterity saving three. Yes. Also, Santa will have to do this as well, I believe. Against a 13. Huh. Against a 13, okay. Um, so one of the guys fails, and then the uh, Santa and the other guy pass. So it's however much cold damage. 2d6. 2d6. Eh. Five. Get him. Get him. Six. So 11, so Senna and the other one will take half for six. Guess what? And then Dichromancy will go off this Boom. <laughs> Four. It's like you finally read how to play your class. I know. Boom. <laughs> Healing spirit. Which one are you going to do it to? So the one that Santa's been fighting has, is heavily injured. Yes. The other one, okay, so you heavily do it to him. Okay. It's just taking So he's still minutes. standing, but he's yeah. looking again, really worse for wear. Um, so that's Lucius's go. Uh, Sentry, you actually get to go before these guys. Cool. All right, so I want to move up to that guy. Yes, please. Charge in. Get ready with Thunderous Smite. So attack yeah. roll. Attack roll, yes. With the battle axe. Uh, six. Uh, where am I again? Actions. Actions. Oh, yeah. That was 12. 12, yeah. Not enough. He uh, blocks it with the staff. Yeah, it hits the wall. Ding. The wall explodes. Nope, certainly everyone not. Everyone in the room dies. Um, <laughs> so they'll make, two, they'll make two attacks each against you and Sana. So Sentry, these are the two attacks against Break you. Down. So uh, it's a 17 and a 14. Nope. Neither hit. Neither hit. Boom, the shield of soul yeah. boom, 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 bounces off against Santa. Tank. One definitely hits, the other one misses. Um, she's going to take another, what's that, five points of damage. Can you protection? Are you going to use protection? Mm. <laughs> Still hits, unfortunately. Ah. So he just manages to like knock your shield out of the way and then reaches in with the other side of the staff and hits her in the face. But she's, you know, she's okay. Your shield just... Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> <laughs> like a xylophone. Santa, one punch, one kick against the injured guy, two against the uninjured or the less injured guy. Fuck me, three, two sixes and a five. One kick. Uh, just no, no kicks. <laughs> like, no kicks. She's just like they're like just bouncing like the staff around as she's like spinning her art like oh. legs around trying to kick these Come guys. On, NPC, do all yeah, the work. Uh, Quill. Uh, okay. Um, God, I wasn't thinking. I mean, you're thinking for me, mate. I was. <laughs> <laughs> it was both of us. Uh, I will get in within 15 feet, like so I'll just stand outside the room yeah. and I'll do a lightning lure on just one of them. Okay. Um, I guess Which the one? one that I, this one or this one? The one I originally hit with the yeah, uh, big big yeah. bolt of nice. Um, lightning lure, so yeah, strength save. That is a 15. Sorry, 18. <laughs> oh, good. Didn't pass either times. <laughs> just doesn't doesn't seem to be affected by the spell as the lightning wraps around him. Nova, unless you want to use your bonus action. Yes, I do. I'm basically just going to yell to Sentry that we've got them cornered and they're basically already dead. <laughs> there you go. You get a bardic inspiration. You hit a d6 to your next attack roll, skill or saving throw. Nova. He's my bardic dice. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, can the bard I cast Toll the Dead? Yes. Oh, which one? Oh, the one in front of Santa. Okay, there one. it is again. Wisdom saving through? It's yeah, like 14. our battle theme Eight. is just... Yeah. Yes! 
battle commence. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Blind! He's dead. Yeah! yeah. You watch as, like, whatever necrotic power just... <laughs> hits the ground. I like to think it makes it bleed, but then he's wearing sure. a face mask. You don't really see it, yeah. yeah. But maybe, like, through, like, the visor. You, you see, see blood, blood pouring out. Oh, through the visor. As his brain liquefies. <laughs> okay. Oh. That's Nova's go. She's a sweet girl. Um, yeah. Lucius. I'm going to throw a firebolt at this one. At this sure. mother chuffer. Yep. I'm gonna lob it like a bean bag, throw it over sentry, okay. arc it onto his head. Sure. <laughs> oh, range spell attack. He's <laughs> gonna die. Firebolt's affected by gravity? No, but Oh 17 plus 5. It hits. Nice. Uh, he like roll. spins it in the air and it like curves Trick around. Shot. Nice. Or I just fire it in a straight I throw it in a straight line, but then I pull it with magical energy down onto him. Okay. Sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. Sounds great. He dies. Roll the damage. Okay. He's dead. There's no point. Two! <laughs> he does not die. Uh, <laughs> you kind of scorch the top half, and you can see the robes beginning to burn away. Should have um, used the sentry. I'm going to smack him in the face, old school. So you roll a d6 for your attack roll, but now you can add an extra d6 to the oh, attack I'm roll. Gonna use do my that. bard dice. I will use your bard dice. So, Where's and me? then d20. There he is. 25! Oh, natural 20! Natural 20! Oh my god! So, you don't just double the dice for the battle axe, mm. you double the thunderous smite dice wow. as well. Oh, so, this, so, hang on a minute, this all happened in the first episode. Yeah, it's very similar. 20, oh right? yeah! So, uh, so it's 1d8 plus your normal damage. Okie dokie. Nice. And then do the thunderous smite at the same time, because he doesn't have any resistance. Okay, so d8 plus 4 is... That's, that's a d10. That's not a, oh yeah, whoops. So that's the d8, or there do you want your is. green one? In fact, was it, is thunderous smite a d8 as well? Um, just have a double check. It's... 2d6. 2d6. So yeah. roll it all together. So uh, take your d8 yep. and then 2d6. 2d6. And, and then it. just double all of that. Oh, Whatever you roll, oh double all God. of this. Oh, <laughs> uh, 7, 14. 14. Still and good. now yeah. add your battle axe damage bonus. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, oh my Christ. Battle axe cool. damage. Plus 4. So. 21. No. no 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. Yes. So that'll be. And he has to do a strength save as well. 10. He failed. Is he knocked prone? He's launched. <laughs> oh, is he, is he thrown backwards? I think so. Yeah. Was yeah. it yeah. on the spell? Because uh, he'll take damage if he's thrown back. Uh, do, 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 do. So, 10 feet on, and knocked prone. Yeah, okay. 10 feet away. So because he can't go further back, he takes damage as if he was falling. So he takes another d6 damage. Oh. <laughs> you just, the, the hole cracks, like you see this like oh. crack against the crystal, and this body just slumps down to the ground. Um, and at this point we're out of initiative because you've chased them the whole way down. I'd like to point uh. out, this is the first time we've had a combat where no one has thrown a death saving throw for a while. Oh, that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. And we went against so many things yeah. as well. Yeah. You're chasing them down. So you're currently stood in this corridor. I'm um, staring into this, uh, it probably was once used as some sort of storage room, but it, it's all been cleared out long, long ago. And they've formed this basic camp. Um, you can see, and the rest of the map, on these other doors, there are more crystalline doors. At the far end, there is another set of double crystalline doors. And you feel this power hum coming to radiate. Nova, Tiangong, there is, it knows there is something there, and it's terrified. Whatever, it's terrified of that room, Ugh. the big room. It, you get this sense of wariness, that straight, that similar sense of familiarity, but just it does not want, it does not like what is there. You get this kind of sense of feeling trapped. You get this sense of, um, yeah, imprisonment and and you know, fear. Given Nova's experience with Chang Gong, where she found him, mm. would she guess it's because that's the I'll power? leave that to you. I'll leave that up to Kim, whether that's what you infer from his feelings. Okay. Um, but that was uh, very messy. Um, uh, can I, like, search their bodies? Thunder or smite would make quite a loud noise. I think so, yeah. yeah I, think like we've made, I don't think we've been very work. stealthy. Yeah. Who running down corridors was like blasting. La, 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 la. Yeah, three hundred. This is um, Han Solo chasing after the stormtroopers, yeah. like in A New Hope. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> Can I search some bodies while you're? Well, I do it. need to make one quick check before we uh, do that. Loot, pillage. <laughs> 
if I can fucking find my star. I don't think we've got time to loot in village, even if they're... So we got one, two... Hold Y to loot. Yeah. A slow animation. Yeah, yeah. Just flip them over, grab them. It's grab so pocket, slow! Drop them. <laughs> Pick okay. up Okay. So you begin, what, you're looking the bodies? Are you looking yeah. the bodies in this body. point? So there was three that died in here. So you pull apart their robes and you can see they're all humanoids. Um, pale skin, um, humanoid features, one's a woman, two are men. They have these masks with these purple visors, that, but they just appear to be, almost be like armor um, mm. that you just detach, like, tsh, kind of comes off. They have these staffs, which as soon as they die, the purple energy goes, and they're just these long metal staffs. Mm -hmm. The camp itself, there is another heat stone in this room, as well as bed rolls, food, water, mm. um, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, you pat them down, you don't really find much else. Um, everybody who's outside the room, so Nova's moved inside, along with Sentry and Sana. Uh, Quill and Lucius, I can you make perception checks for me? Yeah. yeah, sure. Disadvantage for you, Quill, but it's full bonus. Are there any more of those like similar doors around that I can see? Yes, yeah. So each of these little alcoves have the same crystalline doors, and then there is a big set of doors here at the end. Can can I take one of the dead guy's hands? So you chop his chop hand off? Hand. Yeah, you absolutely fucking can. <laughs> yeah. So nice. you are like rummaging through the thing. Sentry gets a hand, shink, and then walks up to a door. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my! You, you, you could just drag him, Sentry. <laughs> It's easier to um, carry him this way. So outside of that noise, uh, I get a 15. 15? 21. 21. Lucius, uh, both of you actually would really notice the doors at the far end of the room. Uh, everybody hide. Slide open. You've got, yeah, if, if you call that out, I'll say that everybody can make a stealth check um, immediately. Oh no. Sentry, you are at disadvantage because mm. you wear heavy armor. Yep. Mm. Can we just... <laughs> What? What? Santa poked, like, is like, what did you say? Like, literally, is like, I rolled a natural. What was that? That's why I said, everybody hide, but I don't hide myself. <laughs> really? What did you get? I got a nat 20. Four. Four? I got, I, I, I got a 13, but my second roll was a nat 20. Well, that's disadvantage, so it's the 13. <laughs> Five. 11! None of you are particularly. You hide behind the hand. Yeah, it's like, mm. <laughs> So the door slides open. And you see beyond a large room. In fact, <gasps> let's move these for now. <gasps> we'll keep this one. <gasps> he just wants to show off. The I do just. I just want to show this off. Yeah, cool room. I just want to show this off. Well, this for podcast the listeners, I've seen. you want to see this map? Oh wow! <laughs> uh, oh, there is a very you. large map being Don't presented crush my mini. to us you right move, now. You move the board. Move it slightly um, down or something. It's huge. What the hell? There's a thing. Yeah. Oh boy. So. Uh, oh wow. Crikey. The door slides open. Did you make all this? Yes. Wow. That's amazing. That's Thank cool. you. And stood at the front of the door, you see another one of these kind of guard looking figures. There is also another one. And then further down in the room, you see a man. He doesn't wear a mask. Um, you can see kind of like black and TJ's coming in. Oh, he's gonna... Are you gonna adjust the camera? Thank you, TJ. Uh, you see he has got like longer hair, streaked with grey, um, and he is looking up at a clear crystal canister. Um, the canister itself hums with a purple energy, and floating in the middle of the canister, suspended by energy, is a bow. It's about the size of a short bow that seems to be made of almost like ice, and trailing with a thin mist that forms its bowstring. Cool. He's looking at it kind of curiously. Um, you can see that this room is just humming with power and he's kind of looking at it. The guard who opens the door is like, Sir, I thought I heard something. And then he sees a bunch of you desperately trying to hide <laughs> as he's just like, Sir, we've got intruders. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah. The other thing, as soon as the door opens, uh, Nova, before we end today, when this door opens and you see this canister with the bow, it instantly reminds you of Tiangong. You hear another voice in your head. And in fact, for the first time, the rest of you hear this voice. You just hear a, no, no, made, made me kill them. It wasn't our fault. D -d -d hungry, so, so alone, it's, wait. Presence, F familiar, familiar presence. Must be Tiangong. 
And that's what we're in today. Oh boy! Whoa. We found Twang Gong. <laughs> <laughs> Gong Tiang. <laughs> Um, well, wow. crap. Yeah, it's a shame we didn't get to this room, but man, what a chase through this ship of <gasps> like yeah. chasing Insane. down guards, like, come back! Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Geez. A new weapon as well. Yeah, and you see it. It's, just <laughs> it's a bow. Hovering. It's good. Awesome. Hovering, Way to man. shit on my I just got it. <laughs> um, and yeah, and that's it. We'll pick things up next week. Ooh, nice. Awesome. Good episode. Rap. I liked it. Yeah, that was a, that combat. I did not expect you like. I guess like I expected you to either finish them off quicker, or them not to get away as fast. So they I didn't expect it running, to be a run. Yeah. I know, like that. But that's them, right? They're like they're that's not just they gonna do. stand and die. They're gonna yeah. try and get reinforcements. All right. Um, yeah, man. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks yeah, for watching. It. Thanks. Uh, a bit of a combat-heavy episode, but yeah, yeah actually no, because the fast bit was a bit of talky and heisty, like funny, trying to like sneak fun. in yeah. and stuff. Yeah. 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 Uh, nice. Oliver and Vade donated, thank you for the donation, no message though. Azul Aura, thank you very much. Gonna have to miss the stream this week as I'm a bit under the weather, so it's the VOD squad for me, but in the meantime, I have a donation for always making my weekend awesome. Thank Aww. you very much. Frank the NPC. Oh, for some reason, yeah, it doesn't, it like resets them. That's really weird. That's only because I just logged oh. in. Probably Chris Trump. I messed it up. Frank the NPC donated, no Katie, why even watch? <laughs> uh, Mark, I'm loving the mystery element of this campaign so far. Keep it up. Rest of the guys, try not to lose any body parts this week. Keep up the good work with iron work, iron sloths. Okay. Yep. He's called yeah. you the iron sloths. It's on name. No. Pet Lapad, thank you very much. Hey guys, I can't hang around for the stream as I'm going to my own D&D session. I just want to Ooh. say thank you for getting me into d and I found a group at university and it's going great so far. We even took inspiration to use the injury table. Much love. Cool. Oh, I thank love you very it. much. Uh, can take it away, Rian. You do some. Uh, just. Uh, Frank, the NPC, has donated again and said, Just dress Valda up as a sloth in armor. It's, it's a good disguise, and she can be the mascot for the Iron Sloths. The Iron <laughs> yeah, Sloths. Yeah, be worth doing. It's big, like, Kirigumi. Uh, Nightjar has donated, Looking fetch AF with that Aww. fancy new hair, Kim. Forever thankful to have you guys in High Rollers as my weekly pickup when life is otherwise a little bit wobbly. Hey, I, I want to say thank you, Nightjar. She sent me a very, you sent me and Nina a very lovely and of a, uh, engagement gift. Thank you very much. I wanted to let you know that we got it. Lovely. Um, I forgot to tweet because I've been busy this week, but thank you very much. Tom, you take it away. Uh, Mearness, uh, is there an RPG system that you think sounds interesting but are intimidated by? For me, it's Mage the Awakening, a game that lets you improvise spells. Yeah, and stuff like that is, like, too much work. <laughs> but too much work. So you're intimidated because it's work. I wouldn't say I'm intimidated by any. Absurdity Maybe. Matrix with a hunt note. Whoa! Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. No message, but thank you very much. Wow. And Dancing on Fire, no message. Thank you very much. Frank the NPC. Uh, way to go, guys. Not that many levels in, and already posting off. Uh, wait, already posting off the Elder Gods of the Realm. Probably pissing, pissing off. Pissing off. Yeah. Pissing off. Uh, spaceships and spooky voices. Humes, I'm loving this campaign. Also, Lucius is a buff boy. Who knew? Not even Lucius. <laughs> and I'll do Varus. Thank you very much for the, your donation and the message. And Metamani with a quarter hundo. Uh, hi guys. I couldn't watch live this week, so VOD squad for me. But spaceship. Hell yeah! I'll jump on the VOD as soon as the stream ends. Please don't die. Thank you very much. Kim? Darth Dave has donated with a... That's not a quarter hundo. No. 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 <laughs> Darth Dave has donated, <laughs> bad pun time, is the bell from Nova's Toll the Dead called Tian Gong. Tian Gong. Oh, oh. 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 Um, and Ace of Thorns has uh, donated saying, All hail, super dimensional edge princess Kimbai. <laughs> I probably wow. do look like an anime, yeah. Uh, Nautilix one has donated a severed hand. Sentry, give me five. No, give me 50. All the hands. Paladin there, just like, I'll chop off the hand. <laughs> Might be useful. <laughs> Uh, obviously, thank you very much for all the donations. Thank you very much to D&D Beyond, our sponsor. Yes, uh, thank yeah. you for checking out the stream. Thank you, TJ, who's done a great work with the tech today, especially yeah. with all the cameras and miniatures yeah, and things like that. Yeah. Been awesome. Thank you very much, dude. Um, and yeah, we will see you next week. I think the, we're all back next week. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll tomorrow. see you on Monday for Rogue's Gambit. We'll see you on Monday. Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, uh, forgot about that. Yeah, <laughs> Monday for Rogue's Gambit. The penultimate um, episode. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Two more of those left. Two more, yeah. The penultimate. Uh, yeah, the penultimate. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> well, I just had to think for a second. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, we'll be back with this. I think this will be a, an exciting conclusion to a lot of things mm. uh, next week. Well. Especially since you guys are pretty much out of spell slots and um, I'm totally out. worn down. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, I've got one. Team wipe! Yep, we're all dead. See ya. Nah. See you next week. <laughs> bye. 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 Bye.